Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. It's January 11th. I I can't believe it. It feels like it should still be November. We have a lot to talk about today. There's a lot going on with the Chrisley case. I saw this on Up and Adam uh, that he covered it and then he texted me. He's like, did you see this? I'm like, no, I've been buried reading emails. I did, did not see this. this. I'm like, no. So why I've do I have a tab open that has emails. me talking? Sorry, y'all. Like, um, that user error. So I was shook if, and today I have the full settlement agreement in my hot little hands. So we're going to go through all the documents, which I have not seen anywhere and I have looked, but I tracked them down and found them. So we're going through the entire agreement. We're going to talk about what that agreement means for their prison sentence, for their appeal. For those of you that are like, what is going on with this case? I'll give you a brief road so far. And we're going to talk about that. We also have some quick bits today. There is some stuff going on with the texting judge. We're going to do that first. Some stuff uh, with Adelson, Donna getting a new date, and then a bail set in the Tupac case. So we're going to do just a few quick bits, and then we're going to get into all the Chris Lee T and go over that settlement agreement. And then if you want me to hear, if you want me to hear, no, if you want to hear me chat about the uh, the rest of that, I will be on Up and Adam's channel tomorrow talking Housewives and Girardi and uh, Chris Lee. So we're going to talk about talk about all of that and probably talk a little bit about BravoCon. And then we're heading to the Vanderpump Rules premiere next week. So we're going to chat about all of that. So let me know where you're coming in from and and what what you're up to. And we're going to uh, we're going to drinky drink some coffee. I've got a a latte in my, you know, iridescent favorite mug. And um, if we have time, I want to watch some of the videos because Brian Enton spoke to Todd Chrisley on News Nation um, like a month ago. And then Savannah said that he was speaking or he was um, being retaliated against for speaking out from prison. So if we have time after we get into that, we're going to look at what is going on to the side of this because Remember, the Chrisleys asked to be allowed to remain out of custody while they appealed, um, and that was denied for both of them. So they are both in prison while this all goes down. So I'm excited. I love that we have court documents, and um, I love being the first one to bring those to you because while other people are reporting things, I've only seen them report on the law firm's press release which we're also going to go over. So that's what we're doing. We're doing all of the things. So let's go. Oh, last thing. For all of you and your patience with the app, um, the engineers are aware that yesterday the app was like, but you really need to listen to today's podcast and sent you a whole bunch of notifications. We are aware we're working on it. Thank you all for your kindness of being like, oh, by the way, just so you know this happens, we know um, we are working on it. When you build things yourselves, we're going to break them on occasion, and I appreciate your patience when that happens. I also appreciate the kindness that you always let us know. Thank you so much. You guys are truly the absolute best. Like, I just, I adore you. I'm going to also let you know one other note. Um, Because my back is killing me and my neck is killing me. So if you notice that my demeanor seems a little wincy, it's just because of that. So these these are things that are rare for me these days, but I have had a spinal fusion. I do have quirks and um today today is one of them. I don't think there is there is anything that is going to um ride through this back pain today except just riding it out. So it happens on occasion. What what are we going to do but stream? So if you're like Emily you seem a little not yourself. Uh-huh. That accurate. That's that's accurate. Um, but who can't relate to back pain? <laughs> and if you can't relate to back pain, um, God bless. And I'm 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 jealous. Just straight up jelly. Totally jelly. So that's that's just that's just what it is. Um, but it should, it should pass within the next like 24 hours. So, you know, cheers to hormones. Aren't they a delight? All right, chat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's play Emily. Let's play the right intro today. I love seeing where you guys are coming in from and what you're drinking. Hopefully your weather is behaving and it's, it's time to go live. Like I was 
I was singing to Miguelina before we went live and I was like, let's go live. Let's go. She's like, girl, you're going to hurt yourself moving. And I'm like, you're right. I need to, we need to keep the motion smaller. We're just going to spirit fingers today is about all we've got. So let's, uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, law nerds. Hey there. I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not Let's get into it. Let's go. We're going to do quick bits first. Um, do I have any other, do I have any other housekeeping matters? I don't think I do. We've got, um, new podcast next week that I'm still prepping for. This one has taken me longer than any podcast I've covered in a while, just because there are so many documents. And that is the thing with where the cases that I'm covering are at right now. Everything's got a lot of legal documents to go through. And instead of bringing you a seven hour podcast of me reading documents, I'm going to summarize them for you next week. But that takes, I feel like I'm in law school. It takes a lot of work. Um, my kid has been doing presentations on Supreme Court cases in school. Uh, my oldest, and I am so excited that he got to present the Jack Daniels Bad Spaniels case, and he got to learn the power of doing something that interests the audience in a class presentation because his classmates were like, wait, they're mad about poop toys? <laughs> and then he got to, to talk about the mischief amicus brief and explain what an amicus brief was, and it was really fun to get to um, work with him on that a little bit. I don't know. I know that having teenagers is not for the faint of heart, but it's been really fun. So I'm, he was like, do you have a Supreme court case that kind of falls in these parameters that you can think of? I'm like, yes, yes. Ask if you can do the Jack Daniels, bad Spaniels case. I know that, um, I know that maybe, because it's dealing with alcohol, they might not want to do this case in school, but it's really not dealing with alcohol. It's really dealing with um, parody and where parody is okay. But I did encourage him not to take in the connect the dots of the BDSM and M. So, <laughs> so we did exhibit some restraint, even though I think it's funny because I realized that maybe not everyone would think that's funny if um, if somebody brought a a you know, connect the dots of the BDS M and M. I think it's funny. <laughs> I I made I made the um the connect the dots handouts for y'all. And for those of you that don't remember um the mischief amicus brief, we might have to do that again. I had posted it in our member spaces and stuff, but we still have a link to that. So we might have to revisit the mischief amicus brief. It was it was just so good and the connect the dots were so funny. So I loved it, um, but I also realize that sometimes my sense of humor, I need to um, be situationally aware. <laughs> and that sometimes um, I forget that because I work on the internet with with y'all and um, because I have an adult audience, I, I, we can all joke about the same things. So did the kids get the joke? The kids got the jokes about it being a dog toy and Jack Daniels being mad that they were associated with poop on their carpet. And since we are in Middle Tennessee and Jack Daniels is a Middle Tennessee brand, I think there was some giggles over the fact that they were taking it so seriously that there's this dog toy that says like poop on your carpet. And they were so offended by the poop joke. I think there was some, um, there was, there was some acknowledgement because it's locally specific. And I think the kids in our county can appreciate adults taking shit way too seriously. So I I thought it was fun. So I thought it was a really good time. Um, Octo said we're going to message the link to the app members. Member, uh, words. Octo, that's perfect. You guys, we have Octo good news to share. I, we're going to have to plan it for another day with photos and stuff, but I'm really excited. So yes, if you're in the app, we'll send it out after the show. That's perfect. Um, okay, let's... Uh, Let's let's do the things. James Hicks says Todd Cressley was recruited by a three-letter agency to go undercover overseas and fight against terrorism. He's undercover right now. I mean, uh, it feels like a fever dream, right? Okay, my coffee is divine. Let us all let us all situational humor. Everyone should just get a sense of humor. It it feels 
like um like the ability to laugh at things that need to be laughed at is lacking because there are serious things that don't need to be laughed at but then there are stupid things that do need to be laughed at when you're just like can we just laugh because this is ridiculous everyone needs a little uh, we all need a little bit of humor or we're not going to survive 2024. i'm here to bring the humor so that's what we're here for all righty um let's get into quick bits shall we and then we will uh then we'll take a quick like 30 minute delta flight one time zone away for me to georgia a flight emily is this a flight you're well familiar with yes the amount i fly through atl is uh is substantial and um and the delta crew is generally consistent so they're like hey good to see you um maybe they say that to everybody i mean they might but i now recognize the flight crew on a lot of those flights because i tend to fly similar times similar legs but i go to atl all the time um i love le- getting to go to atlanta when i'm not just flying through because atlanta has one of my favorite sushi restaurants from california that has some across the uh the country there's one in atlanta freaking love octo and i went there together i was so excited love 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 um they have a diptyque in atlanta they have an ikea in atlanta like atlanta has all of the shopping just all of the just all of the shopping all of the shopping okay one last thing um are y'all watching the coverage of the nine month cruise (laughs) what sushi restaurant kura k-u-r-a it is a conveyor belt sushi restaurant it's amazing get the app put your name on the wait list the waits can be quite long so um are you all watching the things unfolding on the nine month cruise it is like a TikTok thing i am watching youtubers cover the TikTok things so i'm watching like marquee and others cover this nine month cruise but like it's the TikTok drama cruise yes polly exactly it's the TikTok drama cruise it's wild <laughs> Miranda's like Atlanta is full no one else needs to move to Atlanta I drive down to go shopping is that okay I hope that's okay I hope that's okay um the TikTok drama cruise now we've got TikTokers that are like going on the cruise because the cruise has become a TikTok sensation and the cruise is letting you like book shorter legs of the cruise so we're gonna see people like getting onto the cruise to like find out the tea on the cruise I don't know why I'm so captivated but I'm captivated um the way i'm captivated by reality television because it actually it feels like some reality television has like jumped the shark and it's gotten too meta like people want to be in reality tv so they're like planning how to be the best housewife or cast member or whatever the TikTok drama cruise feels like old school drama like old school reality tv like real world style reality tv where people aren't really making a show but they're all on TikTok. It, it it basically is the 2024 TikTok content house at sea with people who aren't necessarily TikTok creators some are i still think some of them might be plants by the cruise and they're not disclosing a sponsorship that's for peter mon to discover um but i still think we might have some issues but some are just people who love to cruise that are part of like cruise talk and their cruise fluencers who are just breaking down their cruise and don't know that if you put too many pineapples on your stateroom door that people are going to assume that you're a swinger even if they're right side up but so you've got this mix of like people who are social media savvy folks and people who are just like living their best cruise life and it feels like a very authentic content house reality unraveling and then the ship kind of partly flooded on a floor because of the rain and now they're going through the drake passage and they've run out of wine it's (laughs) there are people on this cruise that have paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to take this cruise and then there's like this whole like there's this whole class fight on the cruise and so there's a fight between the people who have like status on the cruise line because they've cruised so many times and people who don't have status on the cruise line and then there's like beef between the people who booked the full nine month cruise and the people who booked them in different legs and the people who only booked part of the cruise it is literally uh, it's it's ridiculous silly doesn't impact your life in any way drama and it's watching like 
the craziest, angriest boomers being like, but don't you know who I am? And then these TikTokers being like, but I don't care about your status on Royal Caribbean, bro. It's just so good. Um, so it's 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 got it's giving Titanic right now with the water flowing into the cruise ship. Not that I think the ship's going to going to sink. It's that there's this very much first class versus everyone else in this we're not influencers versus tiktokers it's a content house where half the people in the content house don't want to be in a content house love it so much so marquee's breaking it down others are breaking it down um so that's where i've been following it i do not i still do not have tiktok um so i've been watching it play out on other social media apps and i i just love it i love i love it TikTok content house at sea meets a bunch of angry boomers that are first class that want an elegant nine month cruise and it's turned into a TikTok viral sensation. It's apparently, okay, and then we're gonna move on. Apparently, one of the staterooms, people paid upwards of $700,000 to be in their stateroom. It, it's it's everything. Like it's it's just, it's giving the real, real reality TV that we need. Like, I'm going to need one of the Bravo production companies to to get on this cruise. Like, where are we? Gr where are we? Where are we? So, um, you probably already mentioned, but they're running out of wine. Like, they ran out of one of the types of wine. This happened on my honeymoon, too. They ran out of beer on the island I was at on my honeymoon uh, because the Tri-Cup, the Tri-Nation tournament, rugby tournament was going on. And we were the only Americans on the island. It was mostly uh, Australians, which was really fucking lovely. Um, but they drank all the beer. And so the next day, the the staff on the island was like, the beer boat comes on Tuesday. And we're like, um, okay, we're on an island. And the beer is gone. We're like, why is the beer gone? We're like, okay, I guess just uh, splash something in the rum and we're fine. All right, with all of that, let's get into quick bits. But that absolutely happened. We, uh, the island didn't really have TVs, which was also a lovely way to vacation for our honeymoon, that it was a small island um, with very few burets and no television. But because rugby was going on, it was very clear that there was one television the staff had, and they like pulled this tiny, maybe 12-inch TV out and wrestled and wrangled a um a signal and everyone on the island like just crammed around this tv and watched rugby together it was such a fun night it was it just it was such a fun night australians are fun to hang with so it was it was a good time um all right so australians and fiji were were a highlight not that my honeymoon wasn't lovely otherwise but it was an unexpected and delightful highlight so let's go to quick bits emily you're chatty today yeah it it, it's happening. It's it's happening. It's all happening. Let's go to quick bits. Quick bits. All right, Emily. Uh, you could have taken that time to share your screen, but instead you were just reading comments. Yep, yep, I was. So we're going to go to reporting from Court TV on this because bail has been set for Keefe D in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Who, so I find that really interesting. Hopefully you do too. Um, the last time we were streaming, a number of you were like, girl, something happened in the Tupac case. This is what it was. So let's do it. Uh, judge sets $750,000 bail for Tupac Shakur murder suspect. Las Vegas, a Clark County judge has set bail for Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, the suspect in the 1996 killing of rap legend Tupac Shakur at $750,000. Last month, Davis's special public defenders um, filed a motion asking a judge to place Davis on house arrest and for the bail not to exceed $100,000. What the judge is not going to do. What the judge is not going to do. They claim Davis is not a threat to the community or a flight risk. It's a very serious charge, though. While the judge did place his bail over 100 k Davis will be placed on house arrest if he is able to post bail. According to the motion, the former Compton Crips gang leader has... The former Compton Crips gang leader's health has declined since his arrest in September after being indicted by a grand jury. His attorneys say he is not getting his bi-monthly checkups and his diet in jail is terrible. These are not uncommon complaints in custody. 
Prosecutors argued that Davis remains part of the gang lifestyle lifestyle and still remains a threat to the community, pointing to multiple interviews where Davis identified himself as the one who ordered Shakur's execution. Davis is due back in court February 20th for a status check. His trial is scheduled for June 3rd. February 20th is going to be a busy day. We need to put that on the calendar and we'll check in on what's going on with Tupac after, you know, Ruby Frankie and um, Jody Hildebrandt are sentenced in Utah. We're going to, we're going to be. We're going to be we're going to be back and forth to the two things so this is said scheduled for trial june 3rd i'm surprised the prosecutors didn't argue that he might try to contact people in connection with this case however this case is from 1996 he has said he is the only one of the only surviving witnesses the other surviving witness is in jail so i guess there's not really any witness intimidation that could happen because What's he going to do? Try to call up Suge Knight on a recorded jail line? I mean, there. Who who is he going to call? He's going to try to call Puffy. That's who he's going to try to call and be like, we need to have a conversation. This is going to be um, really interesting to see. So if this goes to trial in June, it will likely be televised and we will be covering it. It is not going to be easy to prosecute a murder from 1996. However... We did talk about his book where he says that he was involved and he gave the gun to the person who shot out of the car and into the car where Tupac was and then Tupac was shot and killed. So how much is his book going to come up at trial? I imagine quite a lot. And that's something I'm very interested in to see how his interviews and his book play into the trial. We also don't know what was the thing that tipped prosecutors over to indicting him now. It's been known for quite a while that he was in the other car. I mean, this was not unknown. Um, the book came out a little while ago. So we'll see what happens. That's it. We'll see what happens. I'm fascinated. All right. Let's uh let's talk about Donna Adelson. Let me pull this. Um, let me pull these two orders up. No, that's only one of them. Where's my other order? Order, order. <laughs> I need my other order. I had my notes, uh, and I only linked one of the orders. We're like 50% there today. <laughs> we're so, we're so close. We're so close. Um, we're going to the case management statement first, and then we're going to go to a, um, then we're going to go to the substitution of counsel. So let's talk Donna Adelson. Donna Adelson ha was arrested, perhaps trying to flee the United States. I did a podcast on it, covered some of the jail calls. You let me know what you think. Um, her son has recently been convicted of murdering his brother-in-law, the sister's husband, Dan Markell, um almost 10 years ago donna has now been arrested there are lots of search warrants that have been filed in this case for every technological everything you can imagine that has a battery and a drive they are searching it computers phones and all of it so will we see donna's husband also be arrested in this case maybe do we still need a podcast episode about the victim's ex-wife's um immunity yes we will get there but Let's talk about, real quick, what's going on with Adelson. Court was closed on Tuesday when she was supposed to be in court because of storms in Tallahassee. Hopefully everybody's good. It's been reset for January 30th. Me being like, maybe they'll reset it this week. No, no. January 30th is when that next case management conference is coming up. So, we will uh we'll be heading into court on january 30th in tallahassee to see what goes on at that case management conference it'll probably be pretty quick but motions could be filed between now and then so we'll see we'll see what we see on that day but i've put it on my docket to cover court on that day um note in the case management conference it says things like if you are sentenced on that day if you are sentenced on this day Court costs and fines will be assessed to you and you will be required to pay in full or make partial payment at this time. That is that is just standard operating procedure. This does not indicate in any way that Donna Adelson is looking at taking a plea, talking about taking a plea. I just, this is a put it in every case management conference minute order so that people are aware. aware. That is it. No, no tea there, no 
other information there. All right, let's talk about the attorney order granting motion for substitution of counsel. This cause coming on, that's a weird way to say it. This cause coming on to be heard upon the defendant's motion for substitution of counsel and the court having reviewed the motion and being otherwise fully advised in the prem premises, it is hereby ordered and adjudged. The defendant's motion is hereby granted. Uh, former defense counsel, Marcel Descalazzo Esquire is relieved of any further responsibility in connection with defendant Daniel L. Rashbaum Esquire and Robert A. Morris Esquire are hereby substituted as counsel of record for defendant done and ordered in chambers this, I don't know what that says, this whatever that number is, 8th, I think, day of January 2024. So, Donna has hired the attorneys that represented her son, Charlie, on his murder case, which is, in, which is interesting. So I, I love Pi said, so what does Esquire mean? Esquire denotes that you are a bar licensed practicing attorney. The degree that attorneys get in the United States is a JD, a Juris Doctor. You can be a Juris Doctor and not be a practicing attorney. You can be a Juris doctor and not take the bar and practice elsewhere. You can uh, have a Juris doctor and be disbarred. You have to be an attorney in good standing to use Esquire. Why did they choose Esquire? I don't know, but I love it, especially when I was a new attorney. I've got a pair of um, 50th anniversary Disney ears here that say Esquire at uh, on the back of them for the day I got my bar pass results. I was like, I was so thrilled. Um, still thrilled. So Esquire, E-S-Q often at the end of the name. Do a lot of people use it? No. My social media handles used to be Emily D. Baker E-S-Q and then I changed it to the Emily D. Baker because I didn't need to have the S E S Q after it. Um, after a while, I was just like, Ugh, it's fine. Like once I'd been practicing 10 years, I'm like, uh, less enamored, but when I was a new attorney, I loved it when I would see it in print. I was like, mm. <laughs> what's the worst though, is the doc, the lawyers, because it's a Juris Doctorate degree, the lawyers who want to call themselves doctor, miss me, miss me, miss me. Um, I'm sure that Esquire comes from the UK. Jan said it comes from the UK. Yes, I just don't know why it was picked to denote lawyers. I don't know. But ESQ. So technically, my signature could be Emily D. Baker, comma ESQ, because practicing attorney in good standing with the bar. You know who can't use Esquire at the end of their name? Alec Murdaugh, Tom Girardi. Uh, Cora is correct. We have Bill S. Preston, Esquire, <laughs> which is probably the best type of Esquire. So either way, I love that the court orders have Esquire in them um it's it's just a little bit of a delight and yeah that's a that's a whole conversation but i was very very enamored with it when i first passed the bar i felt uh i felt very special we're very fancy but if you ever see a lawyer that is not also an md of some sort md dds whatever that doesn't have a medical doctorate calling themselves doctor and they're not in higher education just stop I get in higher education, everybody is doctor something, but um, don't go to court and be like, it's actually a doctor. So with all of that, we need to talk about this texting judge <laughs> because it delights me at this point. And um, to steal a phrase from Runkle of the Bailey, we're gonna ride this pony till, till, till the end. We're, we're just on, we're just on it. I can't stop, won't stop with texting judge. And on Tuesday, some of you had asked what's going on with texting judge, new levels of audacity, uh, new levels of audacity are going on with texting judge. So let's, let's, uh, let's have a quickie, a quickie little conversation about texting judge. And then maybe we'll see if any new documents have been filed today. Cause I checked last night. You never know. You never know. Let's, uh, let's peek it. Let's peek in on the audacity, shall we? Did I cut myself off with my swoop? Yes. Do I control when the swoop swoops? Yes. Still cut myself off with the swoop. Okay. This is the minute order from, oh, let me do a quick road so far. 
for those of you that are new to texting judge if you're new to texting judge will you just pop a one in the chat and let me know that you're new to texting judge texting judge is this judge in oklahoma who when this all went down had been literally a judge on the bench for like 10 months like a sc oh a lot of you are new like a skosh like a sco like a sweet and your first judge your first year of judging people are normally on like high alert don't want to get it wrong want to make sure i'm doing everything right it's like getting a very a new job that is very important i imagine your first year of being a surgeon feels this way too it's like but you have less training as a judge than you do as a surgeon they kind of go oh you were a lawyer go to court and make decisions that impact people's lives especially in a criminal court where people you know impact their lives to the tune of losing their freedom and things like that so it's a big deal and it's a job to be taken seriously i also happen to know in my personal life a lot of judges just because of the work that i did and a lot of criminal attorneys go into uh and eventually become judges so first year judges are normally quite um cautious um rest restrained this is not the way that this went for texting judge in oklahoma texting judge went bet like i'm the judge so like we're gonna do what we want to do the disciplinary action i have never seen and i've read judicial disciplinary actions even those of people that i am acquaintances with because t like the legal community t is judicial disciplinary actions and disbarments um but this judge's disciplinary action is like nothing i have ever seen normally there's like a thing that is a problem for a judge this was all the things this was junior high school behavior running rampant in a courtroom and when the judge got called out for literally texting in the middle of the murder trial um and saying talking shit about the attorneys and making fun of witnesses and being like Ugh, i'm bored like all the rest of it while she got called out her solution was to cover up the security camera that could see her texting and being on Facebook and stuff. And then they're like, you can't cover the security camera in the courtroom. And now, and now you know why, right? We've recently seen video of a judge in Las Vegas attacked. You need security cameras in courtrooms. Wild shit happens in courtrooms. Um, you can't just cover up the security footage because you're doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. But it got so much worse. Like there was a pink chair that she was having photos of defense attorneys taken of and then put up all over her office. She was posting inappropriate stuff in Facebook groups. And then when the inappropriate stuff she was posting in Facebook groups got brought to the attention of the attorneys they needed to be brought to the attention of, she was like, she went back into the Facebook and was just like, Ugh, I guess this isn't a safe space for a judge to be a human because somebody told these defense attorneys i'm leaving it was so fucking dramatic ma'am you can't post about your cases on the internet you're the judge not for long though they're trying to kick her off the bench make sure she permanently cannot hold office and then when she had to respond her response was yeah but you're not going to believe what so and so was doing and let me tell you what so and so was doing she's like if i'm going to, like if i burn you burn with me is the approach that she's taken like she has turned her courthouse into the motherfucking hunger games because she is going to claw everyone down with her that's my read on the situation so let's go to the scheduling order um minute order from december 15th keep this date in mind it will come back december 15th status conference held those in attendance via conference call were a whole bunch of judges. It seems like the whole courthouse was there. Respondent, texting judge, shall file an answer to the second amended petition filed on December 11th, on or before January 10th. You have a month. You have a month. You have a month, courthouse Karen. This matter is set for status conference on January 12th. File it on January 10th, status conference January 12th, which is what? tomorrow this matter is set for pre-trial conference on january 26th will this go to trial yes how old is this judge uh in her 50s with multiple grandchildren she's an adult adult 
courthouse Karen. Yes, we've got courthouse Becky. Her name's not actually Karen, but the throwing everyone else under the bus were a vibe. The matter is set for trial beginning February 12th. We need to get cameras in that courtroom. I need Andy and a camera. So let's let's see what what the judge decided to do with that. She had a month to respond. Can you see where this is going? She had a month to respond. Her response was due on what day, class? January 10th. Mm -hmm. We should just call her Courthouse Tracy with an I, because it's Tracy with an I. To all of those that are Tracy with an I in the chat, I'm sorry, but she's Tracy with an I. January 10th, the day her response is due. Motion to extend deadline for respondent's response. Excuse me, your honors. I know you want to like fire me from my elected position. And I know that like you needed me to respond. And I know I had like a month to respond, but like I need more time to respond because like things are happening. Comes now the respondent and requests an extension of the deadline for filing of a response to the amended petition. Respondent's counsel has advised, advised the prosecutors and the court that respondent's mother has suffered a medical event and has been hospitalized since Monday. Um, ma'am, well, it is unfortunate that your mother is, is having a medical event and is hospitalized. And I hope that mother recovers. Um, this was filed on Wednesday, and the hospitalization occurred on Monday. Shouldn't you have been done? Because this was ordered in December, and you had a month. So did you leave this to be done until, what, the Tuesday before it was due? You're not working, babes. You're on leave. Like, what else are you doing? You're not running a calendar every day. You had a month. Is this not important? Does this not matter? Is this not literally your entire life at this point? No. NBD. 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 They're trying to make sure she can never hold elected office again. And she's like, I was going to leave it till Tuesday, but like my mom's in the hospital. Not that I hadn't tried to pull this maybe in college once or twice where I'm like, um, my cousin is sick. Like I'm not dead. No one was fooled. You had a month. This is your fucking career and reputation. But on Wednesday, the, and, and, and she didn't even file this on Monday. Like I need an extension. Didn't file it on Tuesday filed it on the due date, then asking for more time. Tracy's not taking this seriously. It feels to me, this is my, my emotion. This is my gut response. It feels like she's just like, mm. okay. Respondents counsel is asking for an extension. I'm sorry, boo-boo. Your attorneys are going to file the response and your attorneys need more time because your mother is in the hospital, you can't get on the phone with them for 20 minutes and get it done. What does your attorneys getting their job done have to do with you not meeting your deadline if you're not even the one writing it? And why wasn't this done on, I don't know, M Monday? Okay, okay. This is clearly not a, uh, this feels like it's not a priority, but respondents' attorneys are asking for an extension till January 19th. The prosecutors have no objection to the extension. They're probably like, uh, it, it makes you look bad. And then not only do her attorneys not sign it, Tracy signs it herself. I think, no, this is a different Tracy. Why is everyone named Tracy? This is Tracy, the respondent with an I. This is Tracy, the attorney with a Y. So Tracy, the attorney with a Y is like, I can't. I can't. Respondent's counsel is asking for an extension because respondent's mother has suffered a medical event. 
Okay. I don't, I don't know why this is preventing you from getting it done, but um, it feels like you should take this seriously. So uh, good luck, Tracy, with a Y with your client. <laughs> um, I'm sure the board of other lawyers aren't pressed about this at all. They're pressed. They're pressed. I'd be pressed. I'd be like, really? It, it's not as if this happened over the holidays and it was like, we didn't have a time. You filed the request for an extension on the deadline. Stop. Stop. And as of last night, this hadn't been granted yet. I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the board to just be like, um, ma'am, no, we're not granting your extension and your hearing is tomorrow. Let's go see if they've done that, shall we? And then we're going to move on to talk about the Chrisleys for the rest of the show. But I, um, I just want to see if there's anything new on the docket. So we're just going to pull up the docket real quick because the audacity of filing the request for extension the day that you're supposed to file the response is bananas to me. <gasps> oh, let's see. There was something filed today. Mm. Let's see what it says. Did they just sign it? Don't do that. Everybody's more patient than I am. People are like, Emily, you should be a judge. I'm like, no. These judges have like judicial temperament, not, not courthouse Tracy, but these judges have judicial temperament that I don't have. The judge just signed it. They're like, fine. Judge Pezzo signed it and was like, fine, the 19th, which means they're going to bump the hearing till after that. They're so much more patient than me. I'd be like, if you can't make this a priority, then why should we like, give you an extension? But they signed it. It is what it is. Um, pe people out here being more patient than I am is, is what that is. Emily. Your patience is uh, is lacking always, o always, always. All right, I always think they kind of they they do the thing. The signature is pretty epic. The judges like do the things um, so that when the hammer drops later, they're like, "I gave you every opportunity." Like they don't drop the hammer as early as I would, which is why I'm not a judge. They give you chance after chance after chance, and then the hammer drops. And then it's like, go ahead and appeal me. I gave you every chance in the world. What are you going to say now? Mm -hmm. See, I've learned that um, staring directly at someone while drinking is the new, like, is the new power play. I've been watching too much Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Okay, let's talk about the Chrisleys. We're gonna go to um, we're gonna go first to this press release, and then we're going to go into the actual court documents. We should do a road so far, shouldn't we? We should. We should road so far. We should road so far. Um, let's see. Somebody asked Emily, "What's your famous signature look like?" Uh, definitely not famous. Uh, my signature also looks like squiggles, though the signature I use in public and the signature I use for like banking things are different, which was something that, um, I thought about when the channel started to grow. I'm like, I don't need everyone to know what my signature looks like because like the world is strange and forgeries become easy. All right, let's swoop a doop. No, no, let's not swoop. Let's go to Atlanta. Y'all all aboard. Let's go to Atlanta. Also, Replay Crew, love you. Everything will be time stamped down below. We are now in Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta. The temperature is probably similar to what it is in Nashville, Tennessee, which means it's, I don't know, 40 something degrees. Um, and uh, the shopping is lovely. So, Hopefully the traffic getting in and out of ATL doesn't make you want to die. Let us talk about Todd and Julie Chrisley. For those of you that have not followed along this saga, Todd and Julie Chrisley were well known for their reality show, Chrisley Knows Best. They also um, have a podcast. They were prosecuted and convicted in Georgia right during the Depp Heard trial. So they were in federal trial 
in the middle of Depp v. Heard. So their trial was much shorter, but in the middle of Depp v. Heard. There have always been some things that did not hit me right about their prosecution. There, and this is all coming up in the appeal now. There were um, some real questions about a search warrant and whether the search warrant was based off of information that was improperly seized. And the court had ruled like the first part improperly seized. And then we had like a fruit of the poisonous tree issue. And the judge was like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, you can't just whatever Fourth Amendment issues, but okay. Then there was some really questionable testimony by an IRS agent that indicated to the jury that the Chrisleys had not paid all these back taxes that they had actually paid and that the IRS system didn't show it in one place, but showed it in another place. And then during the appeal process and even during the trial and new trial motion process, it seemed clear to me in reading the court documents that there was a very, very, very high likelihood that the IRS agent knew and that the prosecutor knew that the IRS agent knew that those things had been paid even when they testified that they had not. I am not okay with government agents or anyone giving testimony that is inaccurate. And then the court being like, (laughs) yeah, but that's not like everything. So there are questions about trial testimony from the IRS agent as well. Of all of the cases we have covered, this case has one of the strongest appeals that I have seen. The appeal is um, is ongoing. Not much has happened since the initial appellate briefs. I think we covered those. If we didn't, we'll go back and cover them. We covered the motion for new trial. And it, it there are things that are not right here. And whether or not, this is the same with Alec Murdoch, whether or not the Chrisleys did the things that they have been convicted for, you deserve a fair trial. Agents of the government shouldn't sit on a witness stand, swear to tell the truth, and then not tell the truth. That's not okay at all. And the fact that the IRS can like lose your money and be like, oh, you didn't pay. Oh, it's in this other system. A whoopsie doodle is really fucking terrifying to me. So let's not like, let's not prioritize putting people in jail over getting it right. Let's get it right first. Let's get it right first. Um, All of this stemmed, all of the federal prosecution stemmed from an investigation from the tax state tax board in Georgia and bank loans and other things. The, um, The key witness for the prosecution took quite a deal. The Chrisleys have long maintained that that key witness for the government was the one who was who was actually facilitating fraud. And that person was given a deal to testify against the Chrisleys. The Chrisleys have maintained that they were made an example of because they are public figures. Have Has that happened with public figures who are prosecuted? Yes. Um, was there parts of this case that seemed oddly personal between the prosecution and the Chrisleys? Like, Somebody was really like, we're going to put them in jail. Yes, that's how it came across to me. Could I be wrong? Absolutely could. That's just the read I got. There's weird shit in this case. And I'm not particularly comfortable with people sitting in prison when there's that much weird shit in a case. Like, I'm just, I'm not. It's the same with Alec Murdoch. Like, if if Courthouse Becky did what she's accused of, I am not okay with him sitting in prison On that case, he was sentenced to 27 years on the financial crimes case. You can sit there. But on the murder case, you need to sort that out if the jury's been messed with. If government witnesses come in and lie, you you cannot let that stand. It's not okay with me. So with all of that, they made motions to be, um, to stay out of prison while the appeal was playing out that had been granted in the Jesse Smollett case that was not granted in this case. So they are waiting in prison while this plays out. And during all of that, the initial investigation that they won in Georgia, they sued over and they just won that with a million dollar settlement. And that's what we're going to talk to talk about today. So look, um, it, it does. This case has never sat right with me, seeing the testimony and the way that the testimony has played out. If people have have done things that are wrong, if if people have lied on on bank loans, and we saw that with Teresa and Joe Judice, and Teresa and Joe Judice got, oh Teresa got twenty something months, 
Joe got 48 something months um, for lying on bank loans. If that's what the Chrisleys are alleged to do, do we, how do we get to like 11 and 12 years on this when other people are getting two years on the same thing? It's, it's a lot. So there's, I've got a lot of questions. So, and I see some of you in the chat being like, I'm not a Chrisley fan at all. Totally fair. Whether you like the Chrisleys, don't like the Chrisleys, think they should be in prison, think they shouldn't be in prison. I think we all can agree that the government shouldn't be able to prosecute you with agents of the government not being um, accurate and truthful on the stand. I think that that's a low bar. We also need to make sure that search and seizure is done properly. And if you get to things illegally, you can't use them in trial. So there's all of that. Um, to those of you that are like, I'm a big fan of the Constitution, big fan of justice, big fan of justice. And if you get the just result, then people serve their time. But if you, if you obtain that result by fuckery, big problems, big problems. Um, Aaron in the chat said, I have no opinion on the Chrisleys as people, but definitely agree they deserve a fair trial. Exactly. Big fan of justice. Everyone deserves a fair trial. Um, and there's a difference for me. This might be different for you. There's a difference for me when the arms of the government are the ones that are fucking around versus, you know, a defendant's mother that comes in and testifies and is like, no, he never left that night or whatever. Maybe I shouldn't hold those things to different standards, but the government is the one that has the power to choose to prosecute you. And so if agents for the prosecution can come in and miss state things, which is, I think, a generous way of saying it. Um, I have a larger problem than th with that than family members and, and things like that. I have a bigger problem. I have a bigger problem. So let's, let's not just run rampant. I mean, this was the point of the way our system of government was set up was to have checks and balances. So um, let's see. I saw a really good question and I'm going to try to grab it. Tina said, weren't they given more years, but recently had a reduction in time? Their reduction in time was just like the estimate for good time work time. It wasn't, it was the known reduction in time. Cause you, in most sentences, you do not serve day for day. There's a percentage that you serve 85%, 65%, 50%, whatever. So the reduction was just the normal good time work time estimate. And that's uh standard in every case, unless unless you fuck it up while you're in custody with your behavior, which doesn't seem to be the case here. So let's go to some of the articles about this. We're going to Business Insider first, then we're going to go to the law firm's uh, press release, and then we're going to go to the documents. So Lyndon said, fair trials and due process are hot. I mean, we should have, we should have the the minimum standards of requiring that our trials be fair. That's not, that shouldn't be hard to do. And sometimes that means that people don't get prosecuted and I'm okay with that result. If, if you can't prosecute someone, don't. I'm okay with that result. All right, this is from January 10th. Could the Chrisleys be out of prison soon? Their lawyer thinks so. In 2022, Todd and Julie Chrisley were convicted of bank fraud and tax evasion, but are appealing their case. The couple just won a million dollar lawsuit against Georgia's former director of special investigations of the state's Department of Revenue. The Chrisleys argued that the director had specifically targeted the family on tax evasion charges. Um, let's see. Reality TV stars Todd and Julie Chrisley were awarded one million, a $1 million settlement what their lawyers called an encouraging sign after filing a lawsuit against the Georgia director of special investigations who uncovered their bank fraud and tax evasion. The Chrisley knows best couple accused the department of Reno the department of revenue director of special investigation, Joshua Waits of using his position to threaten people on dubious tax claims in a lawsuit filed in 2019. The lawsuit seen by business insider called Waits called Waits's case quote, a shocking example of how an out of control public servant can abuse his office and violate the rights of innocent citizens for reasons that have more to do with securing publicity and money for his office than with enforcing the law. The Chrisleys allege that Waits, is, that Waits pursued, quote, an increasingly aggressive relationship with the Chrisley's daughter, Lindsay Chrisley Campbell, in an effort to get her to reveal compromising information about the family. In the process, the lawsuit claim Waits disclosed the Chrisley's personal tax information to Lindsay and others, 
which was intentional, willful, and malicious, and or with deliberate indifference to the Chrisley's rights, which you can't do. On Tuesday, Alex Little of the Nashville, Tennessee law firm Burr and Foreman announced that the state government had agreed to a settlement. In a settlement, Little called the settlement an encouraging sign for the Chrisleys in advance of their appeals case. Quote, we have been saying for months that the Chrisley case against, that the criminal case against the Chrisleys was highly unusual and had real problems. This settlement is an encouraging sign. It's nearly unprecedented for one arm of the government to pay money to defendants when another arm is fighting to keep them in jail. In 2019, prosecutors accused the Chrisleys of taking out $30 million in bank loans and encouraged and engaging in a conspiracy to hide their financial situation and defraud banks. They were indicted on 12 counts, and in 2022, both were found guilty of all 12 counts. The Chrisleys denied the crimes but turned themselves in. I mean, they were indicted. Todd Chrisley was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Julie Chrisley received a seven-year sentence, but in 2023, both had time shaved off their sentences. This, again, was not anything other than the standard function of good time work time. In November, the couple brought forward an appeals case scheduled to be heard in April on grounds that the government used illegally obtained evidence in the case against them. Which again, fruit of the poisonous tree. If you get to if you get to evidence B because you illegally got to evidence A, you can't use evidence B. Like there are limited things you can do to punish government fuckery. And one of them is if, if you get to evidence B because you illegally got evidence A, evidence B is fuckery and you can't use it. Like you don't get to benefit from your own bad acts. Let's go to the, let's go to the, um, let's go to the press release from Burr and Foreman. Todd and Julie Chrisley received large monetary settlement in connection with lawsuit alleging government misconduct. Today, lawyers for Todd and Julie Chrisley announced that the couple has resolved their federal lawsuit against Joshua Waits, the former director of special investigations for the Georgia Department of Revenue. The lawsuit alleged that Waits committed misconduct in connection with his investigation of the Chrisleys, and it was filed shortly after the federal government indicted the couple on fraud and tax charges. The settlement came after the state of Georgia agreed to pay a million dollars. The state the, for uh, the family's lawyer, Burr and Foreman partner, Alex Little, issued the following statement, quote, we have been saying for months that the criminal case against the Chrisleys was highly unusual and had real problems. This settlement is an encouraging sign. It's nearly unprecedented for one arm of the government to pay money to defendants while another arm is fighting to keep them in jail. The Chrisleys' appeal of the criminal convictions will be heard by the federal appeals court in Atlanta in April. Um, and we can go through the appeal more another day if you guys... Um, are interested in it. I know that we covered the new trial motion and the appeal briefly, but we haven't we haven't gotten all the way into it, but we can get all the way into it. Um, maybe as we get into February, this month is slammed, but we're going to go to the court documents on this today because we have the full settlement agreement. So, which is, which is unique. Normally we don't get these things. So, yay for us. Um, this, this. The coffee is still good. All right. Let's go to the settlement agreement, shall we? Note it. Oh, Emily, take take the link off. Because every now and then. All right. Counsel, uh, come now the defendants, Todd and Julie Chrisley, collectively the Chrisleys, by and through counsel, and respectively respectively provide notice to the court and the United States attorney pursuant to page two, paragraph two of their respective judgments. Each of the Chrisley judgments orders them to notify the court and United States attorney of material changes in economic circumstances. So you can understand why the court needs to be notified of this, right? The court needs to know if there's any change in economic circumstances because these were financial crimes. There's restitution to those financial crimes. So a million dollar settlement is a change in financial circumstance. Although neither Todd or Julie have directly received any large amount of funds since sentencing, they file this notice in an abundance of caution due to their resolution of a civil lawsuit that resulted in a large settlement in their favor. Specifically, the Chrisleys were plaintiffs in a lawsuit they filed in this district, uh, giving the style of the lawsuit, which involved actions by an official inside the Georgia Department of Revenue. 
As reflected in the joint status update of November 10th, the parties, quote, executed a final settlement agreement that resolved all claims and issues in this case and directs the Chrisleys to file a dismissal of this case with prejudice when certain conditions are met. That dismissal was filed on Thursday, January 4th, 2024. Per the final, uh, per the terms and final settlement agreement, the Georgia Department of Administrative Services paid a million dollars on the Chrisley's behalf. Million dollar judgments from the government are um, are unusual and are rare. The money did not go directly to either Todd or Julie, however, and neither of them have received any funds from the settlement, but numerous debts they previously owed, including some of the reflected, some reflected in the pre-sentencing financial disclosures were paid in part or in whole. Given that those payments resolve some of the debt and therefore change their economic circumstances in quote unquote material ways, the defendants believe it's prudent to notify the court and the United States attorney in accordance with the judgment. So they are trying to be like, you need to know in an abundance of caution, in an abundance of caution, here is the statement and release or the settlement and release agreement. So again, this is something that has been filed in court, not sealed. So we are going to go through it in the interest of closure and in resolution of their differences and causes of action arising from or incident to claims in the civil actions the Chrisley's plaintiffs against Joshua Waits defendant who are collectively referred to as the parties enter into this settlement and release agreement for their mutual benefit. The parties sign this agreement in exchange for the good and valuable consideration set forth herein. Any contract needs consideration. This is the consideration. Um, which absent this agreement, neither party is obligated to provide to the other and the adequacy of which is hereby acknowledged. They're like, this is, this is proper. We're ready to agree. Plaintiffs agree in exchange for the promises made by defendant in this agreement, plaintiff agreed to dismiss the lawsuit with prejudice, meaning they cannot bring it again. As further detailed in paragraph six below, plaintiffs further relinquish any and all claims they have against defendant, including the claim of disclosure of confidential tax information contained within the complaint and under any other provision of state or federal law based on or relating to facts and circumstances therein alleged. Unknown claims. Plaintiff understands that they are releasing any and all claims or potential claims, whether such claims are presently known or unknown, meaning if they discover more fuckery down the line, they can't sue this individual over more fuckery down the line. Defendant agrees in exchange with the promises made by plaintiffs in this agreement. Defendant agrees to pay as follows. Upon execution of this agreement, the department the Georgia Department of Administrative Services shall issue within 30 days of this agreement two checks totaling a million dollars delivered to counsel for plaintiffs in the amount of, um, so this is going to former counsel or appellate counsel Bradley Arnett Bolt Cummings in the amount of 18,000 and Burr Foreman in the amount of 981,000 plus and placed in trust to be applied as follows. Um, four thousand dollars for mediation costs in this matter. This is how this resolution was reached. Fourteen thousand to the lawyers for legal services rendered to the Chrisleys. The remaining nine hundred and eighty-one thousand goes one legal service provided to the Chrisleys by law firm. Um, two investigative and case-related services provided by private investigators and legal vendors. Any expected tax liability arising from the settlement, because remember. When you get a settlement, there can be tax liability, not always, but there can be, and other outstanding debts. Taxes, plaintiffs acknowledge that some or all, some or all or part of the settlement payment may be taxable and agrees to pay all applicable taxes, including federal, state, and local taxes that may be due, if any. Plaintiffs acknowledge that neither defendant nor DOAS shall be responsible for the payment of any tax on the sums paid pursuant to this agreement. It's like if you win money somewhere or have debts discharged, if you have debt discharged by a vendor, you can pay, you can be required to pay taxes on it. The amount of things you can be taxed on is wild. Even if money doesn't come into your pocket, you can still be required if you benefit from a discharge. Um, let's see. I'm not a tax professional. Do not, that is not tax advice. That is just a, uh, you will be taxed on things. Sometimes even things that are money just moving in the air. Plaintiffs agree to defend, indemnify, and hold defendant and DOS harmless from and against any third-party claims together with any interest, penalties, fines, sanctions, et cetera. So that's a 
hold harmless clause as further considered of the mutual promises, covenants, and agreements referred to herein. Plaintiffs agree to provide counsel fully executed W-9s for the law firm where the money is going. Mutual non-admission. It is understood that this agreement does not constitute and shall not be construed as an admission of liability or wrongdoing by defendant, nor shall anything within this agreement be construed as an admission by plaintiffs for any purposes. This is common in every settlement agreement. This is in every settlement agreement that I've ever seen. Uh, normally, settlement agreement settlement agreements also have a confidentiality provision. This one did not based on, well, we'll get to the rest of it, but based on the fact that there was a press release about it and this was not filed under seal. So that's a uh, that's a standard. We're not saying that we're admitting to anything, but also it's a pretty big deal that Georgia has agreed to pay them a million dollars to settle this lawsuit based on the admissions that an agent of their, you know, an agent working for their state did something that is alleged to be wrong. It's it's a you know, it's a big thing. Especially since it wasn't, you know, you will see governments settle cases where you know that it's going to be a problem, even if they're technically right, you know it's going to be a problem either PR wise or what have you. Um, and you look at it and you're like, ooh, they need to settle that and make it go away. This isn't one of those cases. This case the Georgia case wasn't largely talked about, especially after they were convicted in the federal case. So I don't think this is a settlement to avoid like bad press for the the tax board of Georgia. So do with that what you will. Release. Plaintiffs agree that in consideration of the payment herein made, plaintiffs release any and all claims that they may now have or which may arise in the future. Defendant um, against this defendant for all items or damages, whether general, specific, statutory, including but not limited to all the losses. And they've listed losses and damages for personal injury, property damage, loss of income, loss of brand value, loss of profits, healthcare treatment, loss of consortium, loss of society, death and pain and suffering, including mental anguish resulting from the uh, result. Emily, no, relating to the alleged damages and any other losses. Waiver of claims. Plaintiffs further waive any other claims. So you cannot bring anything up again. There's a standard indemnification clause. Uh, the parties acknowledge that they are aware of the facts that may here and after be discovered in addition to or different from those which are now known or believed to be true with respect to all or any part of the subject matter of the release contained in this agreement, but that it is their clear and unequivocal intention to hereby effectuate fully, finally, and forever the settlement release and discharge of each and every claim specifically or generally covered by the above release. So we know and we're done. Mutual non-disparagement also very common in settlement agreements. The parties agree not to make any disparaging comments regarding each other to any person or entity. This includes, but is not limited to, comments made on the internet, whether social media or otherwise, through podcasts that are critically and or derogatory in nature about the other party in any regard. The signing parties, Todd and Julie Chrisley. Todd and Julie Chrisley can't make any statements. Um, assignment. The parties warrant and represent that they have not assigned or otherwise transferred any of their rights. Again, these are, when we're talking standard legal provisions, these are kind of, boi these are boilerplate standard legal prov provisions. Each party bears its own attorney's fees. Mutual release. They're all releasing each other from anything that may arise, any other uh, problems that may arise from this. Competency. The parties are sui juris. <laughs> and understand the terms of this argument or this agreement and as evidenced by their signature below each party enters into this agreement knowingly and voluntarily without any coercion duress undue influences or promises outside the agreement they're they're advised and aware representation plaintiffs acknowledge that they have been represented by an attorney so the plaintiffs can't say we didn't understand we didn't know they were represented they know what's going on um total agreement this is it the four corners of the documents that's all stipulation of dismissal they will file the dismissal that has been filed counterparts this agreement may be executed in counterparts yes it needs to be stated in an agreement i feel like we're in contracts class that you know if you send it to one party to sign that they can sign it and they don't have to sign that original one back this covers covers all of that um to make sure that nobody can say well i didn't sign the copy you signed so therefore it's all invalid Applicable law, Georgia, severability, 
if any part of this agreement later becomes unenforceable, then that gets plunked out and this stays enforceable. Effective date as signed. Savannah Chrisley signed this as power of attorney for Todd and Julie Chrisley because they are in prison. So I imagine Savannah has all of the powers of attorney to take care of everything for her parents while they are in custody, which is a lot of responsibility. And then um, the defendant waits, also signed. Uh, Savannah signed on October 30th, uh, 2023. He signed on November 6th, 2023. This did not get fully executed until right at the beginning of the year with the payment. And then um, we see this lawsuit and the motion to dismiss. So by the time the attorney released the statement, this is like done, done, done. This is all the way done. Um, so that, that is what it is. The payments have been made. All of it is done. So, um, Lady Cat said Savannah is amazing at handling all of this and she's raising some chaos. Savannah also has custody of their grandkid. Yeah, it's Savannah has taken on quite a lot of responsibility in light of her parents going to jail. I wanted to see more of her on, um, special forces because I thought she was awesome on special forces and I was hoping to see more of her than Tom Sandoval, but, uh, it didn't, it, it did not happen that way, but I was hoping to see more of her on it. Um, I was also encouraged by Jojo Siwa toughing it out on special forces. I enjoyed special forces. Competition reality shows are a little different than the like slice of life reality shows, but I could talk about reality. Um, you know, yeah, Anyway, so do I think we'll see the Chrisleys, Todd and Julie talking about this? Probably not. I think their attorney's statement is going to be it and that this is going to be that. But do I think the attorneys will raise it in argument as we're getting further along in the um further along in the appeal saying, look, there were issues with this investigation and we've actually been paid a million dollars by the state of Georgia in connection with this investigation, we're arguing that there's Fourth Amendment violations here. I think it will be very interesting um, to see what's going on. So it's interesting stuff to me. There's a lot of questions about this case. This is not a, okay, well, you know, it's a pro forma appeal. This is an appeal that I'm actually looking at with a lot of curiosity because I'm not sure what the courts are going to do, but they're appealing on a strong basis just like when we look at the murder appeal I'm like there's some real questions here on the motion for new trial we're gonna have to see what the evidence bears out a lot of appeals it's like you know if um if taylor should business appeals here's my response to the taylor should business appeal her lawyers are doing their job and everyone has the right to appeal because everyone has the right to appeal some appeals are very pro forma like we have to appeal and there were errors and rulings and we're doing our appeal and we're running it out and that's what you're supposed to do and then some appeals have more teeth this of all of the cases we're covering this and murda are the appeals that i'm like these appeals have some teeth um and i'm interested to see what the court does with them because these appeals have some teeth so the chrisleys had a pretty big win in georgia um against the tax agency that went after them. And I think it's going to have ramifications and repercussions. At least it's going to be noted in their appeal, but that is a pretty big deal. That is a pretty big deal to me. So is that a big deal to y'all? I may or may not be. Look, it looks like we have time. Um, it looks like we have time to go into some of the interviews. Do you guys want to do that? Ooh, ooh, let's see if the polls are working again. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's see if the polls got fixed. Let me put up a poll. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying it because the polls have been broken. Let's see if the polls have been fixed. Shall we watch the interviews? It's like class. Should we put on a movie? Yes or no? <laughs> there we go. Um, McLendis and when does the chat ever say no? I just want to see if the appeal. The I just want to see if they're working. I just want to see if they're working. Um, Outrageous did point out the Chrisleys are not going after the jurors. Yes, no jurors issues. There's nobody trying to interview a juror in the Chrisleys case. <laughs> they're like, Katie said, how can we get EDB to a million subbies so she can be a real YouTuber? I mean, in the eyes of my 11-year-old, that would be fantastic. Um, but I definitely don't. My 11-year-old my values my, my status as a YouTuber based on subscribers. I don't. Because every time I get to come in here and talk to the Lawnards, I'm like, um, there's thousands of us getting to talk about law and pop culture and 
life and I love it. It's, oh my God, all of you guys are like, it's working. Yay. <laughs> it's working. It's fixed. I love it. Okay, perfect. 94% said yes. So we're going to look at some of these interviews about custody. <laughs> Elizabeth said, depends on the movie teacher. That's fair. We're going to look at some of these interviews from custody um, on the news programs. And then we're going to go to Q&A. Because I have so much reading to do in the Leah Remini Scientology case to get the podcast ready for next week that I'm going to spend a good chunk of my day uh, doing that. So the Tiffany kind said JD had some teeth. I wish he didn't drop it. I think, I think JD's appeal did have some teeth. I was interested to see the ruling on how it went with a lawyer being held responsible or with JD being held responsible for things his lawyer said, but I completely understand why they dropped it. It makes sense why they dropped it. So I get that. Um, will they get time cut on the jail sentence? They've already gotten their like good time work time accounted for. If there's an appeal um, and they get a new trial, sometimes they get out of custody for that. Sometimes you don't. So it really just depends on what happens. If, if they got a new trial and all of the evidence on the fourth amendment issue and what we might just need to cover the, um, the appeal again next month. If the evidence is ruled to have been improperly obtained, which it previously was, and then the court allowed it in. So if the evidence is ruled to be improperly obtained and not allowed to be used, it is possible, possible that the prosecution can choose not to re-prosecute and then allow the Chrisleys out of custody. It is possible that the government could choose to re-prosecute without using any of that evidence. But it's a lot of the evidence. Like it's a lot of the, it's a lot of the documentary evidence, if not all. So it would be a difficult case, in my opinion, to re-prosecute um, without that evidence. And that's that's why they are arguing it so strongly on appeal. The the Fourth Amendment violation is a big deal. And that stems out of this Georgia case. So we can get through all of that. Um if you guys are interested in another day, I, I judge what topics you're interested in based on the comments and what you let me know. I'm really interested to see how this all, um, this all plays out because there are some big questions here. And it was so staggering to me that that evidence had been ruled improper, um, by one court. The judge was like, yeah, this, this first thing you didn't have um, you shouldn't have gotten to. So there was a violation getting to this first thing, but because you had this first bit of evidence, it led you to all this other evidence you got. It shouldn't come in. And then the judge is like, it's coming in. That's bananas to me. Absolutely bananas to me. So we can go back through the appeal and kind of refresh on that. And, and we, we don't really have any appeals that we've talked about, um, in a while. Other things that are on my radar that we will get to as probably quick bits is the Eminem trademark dispute with Giselle and Robin of Real Housewives because their podcast is called Reasonably Shady and Slim Shady has a shady issue with it. So we're going to get into shady trademark disputes in a little bit. Um, there, that case has now been stayed because they are fighting over whether or not Eminem will be deposed. So Eminem fighting with the Real Housewives. We're gonna we're gonna do a quick bit on that. We've got uh, Britney minute orders. We need to go over that'll be on Tuesday. We've got a lot of other stuff coming up. But when I saw this headline, I was like, "This is a really big deal," and it doesn't seem to be getting talked about commensurate to how big of a deal I think it is. So I'm like, "We're just gonna talk about it. We're we're gonna make it a big deal. This is a big deal. This is a big this is a big win." Um, this is a big win. And they won that case. This case is weird to me, man. I don't, I don't like it. All right. Let's go look at, um, Todd's conversation with Brian Enton from prison and then Savannah's, um, follow up on news nation for that. So we're going to, we're going to pull those news. Hey everybody. This we're going to pull those up. I think this is, uh, audio only. And let's see, I think this might be an audio only phone call with Todd. So let us, is this an hour long? 
and we might we might not be in it for an hour long um but we'll see we'll 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 get to the different different parts of it but this is a like an hour long and across america we're just gonna go into it and we're gonna see what happens <laughs> emily you should have planned better and look into how long the video was eh, probably <laughs> The class does not mind. The class does not mind. All right, let's get started. This is Brian. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm actually back uh, in Florida, which is where I live. I was in New York City last week for work. New York and City! It's nice to be home for a couple of days. But I wanted to um, do a video talking about my uh, Todd Chrisley interview. And uh, if you're not familiar with who Todd Chrisley is, there's the show Chrisley Knows Best, uh, which was... I kind of love that Brian Enton's just like in his car. Like, I think when a lot of us found Brian Enton first, um, it was during the Gabby Petito case. That's at least when he first came onto the radar for me because I really appreciated his coverage of that case. So I, um, it's it's kind of funny to see him back in the car, like, hey, <laughs> back in Florida, back again. Okay, don't start singing Slim Shady, Emily, stop it was like a, a Look really popular back. show on, uh, on cable again. for about 10 years. My mom actually loved the show. So that's kind of how I knew about it. Um, <laughs> like around the holidays, my mom would like be binge watching it. And I Me, the entire time I was at VidCon with creators coming up to me being like, oh my God, my mom and or aunt and or sister loves your content. So to all of those young creators, hello to your your mothers, your aunts, and your sisters in the audience. But I thought it was really funny. So I love that he's like, my mom loved that show. Yep, 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 understood. And um, if you don't know the show, it's basically this family. They're originally from Georgia and um, sort of have this lavish lifestyle. And long story short, the it's, it's always the lavish lifestyle. If it's not a lavish lifestyle, do we want it on reality TV? Then that's a different kind of reality TV. Parents, Todd and Julie Chrisley, uh, ended up getting indicted and convicted on um well, that's tax better. and bank fraud Emily, turn up the volume. Todd Chrisley, the dad, was uh, sentenced to 12 years in federal prison. It was reduced to 10, I believe. And then, and that's the good time work time. That's not a like, oh, you should serve less time. That's just the the math. That is the math mathing. Julie, her sentence seven. was I think seven years, and it was reduced to five. Um, That's and I ended up, if you've been watching News Nation, I did this uh, story where we heard from Todd Chrisley behind bars. It's interesting. I got some heat from it. Um, some of you, people on Twitter really? and stuff saying like, you know, there's so many important stories out there. Why did you? Brian, me speaking to Brian and as if I know him, um, but I feel like I do through content, even though I do not. People on Twitter are mad about everything picked a time to do the story about this rich guy who went to prison and i'm going to explain that later in this video kind of the case is weird we should all be concerned about government overreaching and if they're not overreaching prove it to me but we should all be concerned about government overreaching i think my opinion call me crazy um but i i think it should be a high hurdle to prosecute someone i think that that's okay and as a former prosecutor it's when the case is solid, that high hurdle is not hard to cross. Like it, it's not difficult to cross. The only time that hurdle is hard to cross is when the case is not strong. And that is when people should not be prosecuted. So. Kind of in more detail, but I didn't. I don't do think it that's crazy. About Todd Chrisley. I did it because I thought it was really interesting what he says is happening inside the federal prison system. He's in the federal prison in Pensacola, Florida. And I've done stories on, I used to work local news in Miami about um, what goes on behind bars. And uh, it's not good. You know, I, that's why I was interested. The fact federal prison's not fun. It's and and the federal prison that Todd Chrisley is in is like not as nice as the federal prison that like Jen Shaw is in. Um, but I am going to need a reality show like with with all the reality stars that have had that experience um and just in the bravo universe there's now more than i would have ever expected so that if there's you know issues happening behind bars where people are you know being hurt and not getting food and that kind of thing yeah those are problems I, I think it's interesting that he's exposing that um i also think his story is interesting too but honestly i was more interested in 
what's happening in federal prison. I'm interested too, Brian. Really hear about. I get it. Federal prison camp again, Pensacola. Um, I first through his attorney gave us permission to interview him in prison. We put in all the paperwork. The prison was uh, like his nah, lawyer boo. said we could go in prison and interview him, and that got denied. I actually have to. Eat. I wonder why. I'm so curious as to why it got denied. Um, chat, why do you think it got denied? Email here from the Bureau of Prisons. They said our policy based reason for this denial is listed um, in part the interview, in the opinion of the warden, would probably cause serious unrest or disturb the good order of the institution. <laughs> no, it is a federal prison camp, it is not a maximum security prison. Um, and bringing in a, even if it was audio only, bringing in a visitor like Brian Enton and a audio recorder into an interview room is not disturbing shit. So that's the reason that they said officially we couldn't go into the uh -huh. prison to interview Todd Chrisley. Um, Do they not I thought it was reporters? interesting because we knew that Chrisley was making all these accusations about the prison, that the food was expired and, you know, not good for human consumption that it's like really really awful food that there were rats and that a dead cat fell out of the ceiling and you'll hear all that in a minute and that you know the elderly inmates aren't getting the medical care they need medical care in prison is a constant and ongoing issue so when they denied me access into the prison kind of just like as a reporter you get more interested like well, why aren't they letting me in is is it really because we would cause unrest and disturb the good order of the institution like would anyone even really know we're doing the interview? Other no. And mates, I don't really know what they meant by that. No, um, I agree with you. So I ended up being able to hear from Todd through his attorney. Um, and you're going to hear these sound bites in a second. I never uh, I'm reached out to Todd directly. Ready to hear the sound bites. I just want to make this clear because I don't want him to get in trouble with the prison system for that reason because we never reached out to Todd Chrisley directly. You remember when Alex Murdoch got in trouble for giving interviews in custody, like all these things have to be approved. And I appreciate that Brian Enton is going like, we did this the right way. His lawyer, Todd's lawyer is allowed to talk to him. So when they're saying like, Todd can't just give interviews, true, but his lawyer can ask him questions and provide that to Brian. But that's exactly what happened with Murdoch and his lawyers interviewed, his lawyer spoke to him and recorded it and he still got in trouble, uh, Murdoch still got in trouble for that. Um, this was all through his attorney. Um, we were able to ask questions. And I love that Brian Enns the vlogger. And you know, ask those questions of Todd. <laughs> well, the news so, nation is like, uh, what we're, you know what we're going to do? We're going to vlog. We're going to car vlog. We're going to throw it back like 2017 and just like bring back the car vlog. I'm here for it. Um, that's sort of the way this, this went down. Uh, I just want to make, make that clear. Cause a lot of people are saying, oh, you got this, you know, interview with Todd Chrisley behind bars. It wasn't exactly like that. Yes. Mary was saying they should have sent Julie to Camp Cupcake. Is that Camp Brian? I think Julie wanted to be at the camp in Kentucky because it's closer to Tennessee than Camp Brian in Texas. So easier for family to visit. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't through Todd. This was all through his attorney. Um, and he made some pretty wild accusations about the prison. I want to play uh, this, first, this first clip from, uh, from Todd Chrisley. Do you feel like you're being treated fairly? I'm very interested to hear these clips. This is what we were we were waiting for. By the guards and, and the prison staff? No, no. They're okay. I can now understand why everybody thought he was interviewing Todd because the way that this is clipped together looks like he's interviewing Todd, doesn't it? I mean, is... Is Brian Enton talking to the lawyer and the lawyer talking to Todd and like on a three-way call? Because that's all, what, I can understand why there's questions. By the guards and, and the prison staff? No, no. There are recordings of staff members here talking about um, he needs to be humble. What we need to do is we need to put him in diesel therapy and put him in shackles and let him ride around the country for four months and then bring him back and that will humble him. He thinks this is one of his bands that he's living in, but this is the okay. That's what's on the Oh, News Nation, don't pleep out the fucks. We want to hear Todd Chrisley say fuck. Come on. There was a photograph taken of me while I was sleeping and sent to my daughter uh, asking for $2,600 a month for my protection. 
that's a big accusation. And if that's going on, that is not okay. Wow. Wow. Uh it's chat it seems like he's having a conversation with todd chrisley i can see why everybody was like well are you having a conversation with todd chrisley did the lawyers put them on three-way call because that might also not be okay but what they what he said is that a picture of him was sent to his daughter while he was sleeping asking for money to protect him while he's in custody um what about the food todd i mean savannah has talked about the food it um, really seems like you, he's talking uh, to Todd, y'all. I've got unsafe? Brian. I got it questions. How does he know that though? Like, how does he know that the? I have questions about how we know that the food is is dated. How do we know? I'm, I've got questions. It's a year past expiration. And they are literally starving these men to death here. These men are getting, I don't know that they're getting a thousand calories a day. So what are you eating if, if you're not eating the food? The only food that I eat is what I make that I buy from commissary. One of the, one of the warden's ways of kind of, I've been told this by a staff member, one of the ways that she's trying to break me is by cutting down what you can buy in commissary. Interesting. Um, interesting. So before she came here, you could buy 12 packs of tuna a week. And she cut it down to six, then it went from six to three. She is not given a reason. She says when I asked her. So the, he's saying that the warden is cutting down the amount of food that he's allowed to buy at commissary, trying to make sure that um, you can't, get enough calories to make up for not eating the food in custody and for those of you saying maybe he's working in the kitchen he might be working in the kitchen he just he didn't say that um Go back to this commissary is a privilege not a right so do i mean you that's true tuna commissary is a privilege not a right however um <sighs> tuna, peanut butter peanut butter is very popular um, beef sticks I eat like a pasta salad that I make, pasta that I get in commissary, and then I start over again doing the same thing the next week. You've got rats, you've got squirrel in the in the storage facility where the food is. They just covered it up with plastic and tore the ceiling out because of all the black mold and found de a, a dead cat in the ceiling. The one thing I will tell you about prisons is generally people know what's going on within the prison system. They they know exactly what's going on. Um, and when they're talking about breaking Todd Chrisley's spirit, I can't imagine he's a danger to anyone. I mean, I, good Lord. And get dropped down on the, on the top of the thing. My gosh. So they're not letting you in here. Because However, the rats, the squirrels, and rodents – are also issues in like military housing. So this is not specific to two prisons, um, but you know, the government always, isn't always great at running things. Cause it's a, it, it, it's a breach of security or whatever. They don't want you in here where you can see what's really going on. So you heard Todd there. I don't necessarily disagree with them not wanting a reporter in there for that reason. We're gonna zoom, zoom back to more of what Todd has to say. Um, it's been like not being able to communicate with her. It's devastating. Uh, she and I email, you know, four or five times a day, but they will hold my emails and hold them on her end as well as a way of punishment. So not being able to email with his wife. So if I write her an email today, if I write her three or four, if I work out, then I go to the computer and I'll oh, no. my kids an email to Savannah. Morning attorney email and just say, I love you, stay strong, God's got us, whatever we're saying. Interesting. And anyone else's email will go through within two hours. She may not get mine for five days later. Are you ever concerned that maybe you should, I mean, stay quiet because you're trying to help other people by speaking question. out, but it sounds like you talking about what's going on there is going to bite you, making your situation worse. It's a fair question. I know that there is, God has a greater purpose. I know he's got a greater plan. 
and I'm not going to let the federal government break my faith. I'm not. They wanted to destroy our family. Tommy Kripp, the prosecutor, said that we were the southern version of the Trump. I'm not going to have someone like him break my family. And that's what he wanted to do, but he, he's not been able to do that. So that was all uh, interesting. All right, let's see what else he has. It, it seems like they are re cutting um, Todd's interview um, a little bit. They piece of garbage. Listen, listen to that part. They treat this man like a piece of garbage. And the man failed in the hallway in our, in our dorm. This is talking and about he, another he, prisoner. And they keep in mind he got up because he was I'm bleeding from, he was not talking, bleeding from his rectum. Not getting me, uh, medical care that is needed. Um, let us zoom zoom to the other parts of his conversation this looks like his conversation with savannah we're going to go to that second uh, um interview to the shorter version of that interview okay so as i'm scrubbing along the bottom of this the next like 40 minutes of this is brian Etten's conversation with savannah we're going to go to the shorter interview with savannah um and see what she has to say and then if you want the full interview with brian Etten and savannah that is on youtube on news nation um, on that video with Brian Etten from four weeks ago, Todd Chrisley speaks from a prison exclusive interview at and across America. So you guys can find that this is, it looks like a different version of Savannah speaking to Brian. So there's, um, there's a couple of those on news nation. If you want to go find those, um, Ryan Blackhawk. Yep. I, yep. We're not, we're not, I, it seems like a wild story, but I wanted to see what Todd's experience was not necessarily the experience of other prisoners. So go watch that full video um, from Brian. It's like an hour long. I want to have a look at what Savannah has had to say. And I'm sure that Savannah has talked about this on her podcast as well. Weeks ago, uh, we heard from reality star Todd Chrisley from behind bars. He and his wife, Julie, are serving a combined 19 years in prison for tax evasion and fraud. And he told me of the horrible conditions he and his fellow yep. inmates are living in. But that interview did not come apparently without a price. His daughter, uh, Savannah, claims he is facing a major backlash in prison. She recently posted uh, this from her Instagram page, quote, how ironic that the warden is trying to ship my dad after the News Nation interview with Chris Cuomo and Brian Enton claiming that they're inciting a riot and a risk to institutional safety. He, he talked about the food. He, he is not inciting a riot talking about the food. Get real. Savannah Chrisley uh, joins me now. Uh, Savannah, it, it's always um, good to see you. I, I'm curious, what, what is the latest with your dad since we heard from him behind bars um, has he suffered any kind of retaliation? The retaliation is real. It is heartbreaking for me to watch as his daughter, but they have even gone. I am very curious as to what newsroom Savannah is with the the Batman building and the Nashville skyline behind her, because uh, she's in a newsroom talking to them, and it's I curious. On to the extent of stating that they will try to ship him to a state facility because our federal institutions cannot guarantee his safety. Tell me about this letter. But his safety from who? Because it sounds like the safety and the confusion is from, or the safety and the concern is from those working within the system and the food. Savannah, you received an anonymous letter after our story from workers in, in the prison. Yes. So there are individuals who work in that facility who are giving me all the information, which should scare the warden and the BOP. The BOP has called me a lot numerous prisons. times, but I have all the information to back it up. And these letters, I mean, I even. Are we going to see a Chrisley lawsuit against the Bureau of Prisons? Because because we might have recordings of them speaking about shipping my father and but they have to have a good reason to they have to find something he's in violation of so i have heard i wonder if i wonder if that's why brian Enton was so careful to say look we weren't talking to him directly but even a three-way phone call could be considered a violation uh depending on how they're interpreting those rules we definitely saw that happen with murdaugh look that's wild all right let's keep going 
that they are looking to move him out of the federal facility to the state facility. And generally, federal facilities are a bit better than the state facilities. We've definitely seen Alec Murdoch and his co-conspirators and co-defendants try to move themselves into federal custody, not state custody. And it would be bananas that they would move him to state custody in Florida when he was convicted out of the federal system in Georgia. <sighs> of planning cell phones, drugs, going through his lockers so that they can send him to a facility and truly behind bars. You know, he he talks about really just a heartbreaking situation in that in that prison with other elderly inmates. And, and these are people there for the most part who, you know, haven't committed violent uh, offenses. It's this is a prison camp, a federal prison camp. So a federal prison camp is um, a different situation than a maximum security prison when they say camp it is a more open dormitory style environment um you're not like in a in a small room with one other inmate with like a door shut closed they are a lower security situation so that is that is different it's a lot of like people who stole money and that kind of thing. He talked about one man in particular. Mm -hmm. We haven't played this part of, of, of the talk yet, but I, I want you to listen and then we'll get your reaction. They treat this man like a piece of garbage. And this and is regarding somebody else's safety. And again, we wanted to hear what was going, um, what was going on with Todd. So this is about somebody else not receiving medical care. You guys can go and watch that part of the interview for sure. But I wanted to hear the Todd specific stuff as we're covering his case. Same thing. And, you know, I get accused today. I was accused of being a democratic socialist. <laughs> and you look at it and you laugh. And my response. How does it become political? I missed that part. Hold on. It's heartbreaking because I hear a story that could very well be my life. And that that's the heartbreaking thing. And, you know, I get accused today. I was accused of being a democratic socialist. <laughs> and you look at it and you laugh. And my response was, why? Because of my love for criminal justice reform and to give these men a second chance. And what's so heartbreaking is you talk about these white collar crimes. And Cory Booker just came out uh, with a report in 2023 with the CARES Act that showed 13,000 men were sent home on home confinement and only 22 reoffended. So clearly it works. Why are we housing these men and wasting taxpayers dollars? We've already wasted $140 million on housing these men in prison when they should have gotten out six months to a year ago. Hey, thank you for watching. Interesting. Please go so to newsnationnow.com. You guys can follow News again this. You can follow the family side of the story because Savannah has a platform. Um, and so with savannah having a platform you can go co you can go listen to what S savannah is is covering with this her experience with what her parents are experiencing in prison um i would imagine this is all a whole new world to the chrisleys um that that finding out what's going on in our prisons is like a wait what is happening um and again Treating people like humans is a constitutionally guaranteed right. So I prison's never going to be pleasant. You are locked away from your liberties and your freedoms, but it's also not supposed to be that you are being tortured with food with like rat pellets in it. Um, they're not supposed to be unlivable conditions. So there, there is... <sighs> Anyway, there is a, a whole world of conversation to be had, and it's interesting to see um, when people are like, wait a second, this is really bad. Um, and I'm going to keep covering it because, again, when you look at the Chrisleys and you look at their case, if they are convicted on evidence that was illegally gotten, they shouldn't have been convicted. So we're going to go through all of that and keep following up. Let me know. Um, let let me know what you think. I'm curious what you think. And I've seen some of you being like, "Well, prison's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Prison's not great, but it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be unsafe because the guards are after you. Like that shouldn't be happening. It does happen, but it shouldn't be happening. So, with all of it, um, we're going to get to Q and A. So it's it's uh, yeah. It is what it is, but keep uh keep an eye keep an eye on it. This one is um 
this one is interesting to me and I hope it's interesting to you as well, Law Nerds. And again, if you want to follow along with more of the stories, News Nation has those full interviews um, up on their channel. Savannah has her podcast. If you want to listen to her, um, her experience going through things, absolutely uh, go follow all of that content. Um, I will keep diving into the legal side of the story. I was interested to see uh, more of that, Brian, and an interview as I started circling back to this case because of that settlement in Georgia. Sometimes it takes a new development to like, to like pull, pull things, pull things back into my orbit of attention. So it, it's a, it's just wild, wild. All right, let's get to questions, shall we? All righty, law nerds, it's good to see you. Um, after like a four-hour episode on on um, Tuesday, we definitely have a little bit of a shorter episode today because oh, because my back is killing me. Um, question, what happened to the bailiff in the texting judge case? I have found, Julie, no information on whether the bailiff was terminated, whether the bailiff's being investigated, none of it. I have seen none of it. So, oh yes, Miguelina, go ahead and end the poll. I haven't seen, I'm keeping an eye on it. So EDB should be looking into the bachelor pregnancy scandal involving Dave Neal. Okay. There's a bachelor pregnancy scandal. Uh, you know, I love when reality TV and law meet. You guys don't always. <laughs> There's times when you're like, Emily, can we get back to the crimes? Look, I tried. Everything in the Corey Richens case is recently been filed under seal a bunch of stuff in the idaho case has recently been filed under seal like i am trying but the crime cases are kind of going to like explode again at the end of the month so we're 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 in the reality the reality world of of cases so we'll get back to the murder cases in a minute i promise um raquel said do you think he could just be blowing it out of proportion to gain sympathy i mean nothing he said doesn't track with with things I've heard in my own experiences, again, I've not worked as a defense attorney, but I've definitely um, heard the experiences of more than a few people that were in prison, federal or state. I'm not, nothing he says doesn't track with me, but could he be speaking up to gain sympathy? Yes. Could he be speaking up to try to improve the circumstances? Yes. Can those things go hand in hand? Yes, they can. Um, off talk at topic but will you cover the crumbled trials in my case about the parents oh i thought you meant the cookies um i haven't looked into that i generally do not like covering school shooters so i uh i d it's probably going to be a no i have not looked at what's going on with that case with the parents the crumbly case but i thought you said crumbled like the cookies and yes crumble and dirty dough and the rest of it will be in another food court. Um, question, will you ever touch or cover Jeanette Braun? I am not going to touch Janet. I don't think there would be consent to do so. We definitely don't live in the same state. I'm being cheeky. I've been watching Runkle's coverage. We will see. It's not, it's not untouchable. I just, um, we just have so much to cover and that's a whole can of worms um, that I am not we have not delved into yet. Runkle has been covering it. If you guys aren't watching Runkle the Bailey, he has been covering every legal filing in that case. I have not had time to get up to speed. I've been watching Runkle's coverage. Um, am I going to say never say never? No, I'm always, when attorneys are doing stuff that rings, uh, rings like fuckery, I'm always interested in taking a look, but it's going to be a minute. Question, are Keefe D and the guy who attacked the judge in the same jail? I have no idea. I have no idea how many different uh different custodial situations there are in las vegas so i i do not know i imagine that the dude that attacked the judge is probably being confined by himself for a little bit um let's see emma said prison system in america is rife with systemic issues uh not wrong alco said question has the legal world always been this bananas yes Yes, I think we um I think we get more information now just because there are more people covering it, right? We live in a world where there aren't just three news stations that cover all of the courts. We don't just have 
one local reporter that's like, I just report on the local stuff that's going on here to our local paper. The internet has opened up coverage. I'm not a reporter. I'm not a journalist. I'm not trained in media. Um, I'm trained in law and I follow down ADHD rabbit hole um, curiosities. So it opens up a world of other cases that people might not be talking about. Like traditional news media doesn't always talk about pop culture cases that tends to get shoved into like the pop culture spaces because somehow pop culture is like less interesting than politics. And I'm like, no, pop culture is fascinating and it's not less serious. It's very serious to me. Um, but pop culture tends to get relegated to like morning talk shows and like um, E and entertainment news and stuff like that, not in traditional media. And I think we're starting to see a crossover but I'm, um, I think that we're able to cover more because there's more people doing coverage, right? When you look at um, the people I talk about frequently on YouTube, a lot of us are just lawyers who are interested in explaining law in a way that's understandable and covering quirky or different or interesting cases that follow along our interest. And we all cover different kinds of stuff, but there's so many more of us than just a few people that are hired by a newsroom. So I think it's always been this bananas. I just think it's easier to get the information out there now. Question, how much Scientology stuff did you cover as a DA? As a DA, none that I can remember. Um, as a law uh, as a law clerk, we had cases that were related. Slipknot are getting sued for what? We love a music case. We know we need to um, circle back on some of the other music cases. There's There's some other music cases that I'm very interested in. Don't worry, we're going to get back to food court soon. The Reese's case is very interesting. The bachelor scandal may turn into a criminal case. Good to know. Um, so let's see. Um, EDB says Runkle's coverage is excellent. It is, and funny, because Runkle's funny. I Right now, I don't know where it would go, because I'm so, 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 um, so swamped. Off topic, what budget do public defenders have versus prosecutors for expert witnesses, et cetera, in murder cases? I have absolutely no idea. And it's going to vary widely by jurisdiction and who divvies up the money. I have, um, I've not seen, well, it's a little bit different because DAs work with law enforcement. And so a lot of their experts come from law enforcement. So it's like, just run it to the DNA lab. And then that information is given to the defense. So how the public defender's office works on budgeting is a great question for Natalie lawyer chick. She probably has worked with that more intricately on, on her end. From my experience at a very large prosecutorial agency, our County had multiple DNA labs. And so most of the experts came from within law enforcement. So we weren't paying for experts outside of, you know, that was somebody's job at the sheriff's department or what have, or have you, it would be different in much, um, it would be different in much smaller uh, counties and, and smaller jurisdictions where they don't have a sheriff's department that has literally everything. So, oh, Rosie, this is a great question. Did you try the Starbucks bites? Their deliciousness. I tried the new Starbucks bakes. I fucking love them. And then it took me multiple Starbucks to try them because they were sold out everywhere. <laughs> so it took, it took so much time to get to them. Um, took so much time to get to them. Amber said, Chris Lee and Miraval are my top two interests plus the aftermath of the Maya trial. Aftermath of Maya is on the docket. Chris Lee we covered today and we'll get back to the appeal. Miraval is on the list to get to next. Any updates on the Tati case? They're getting ready for trial. I have not looked to see if there's any updates. Um, I have not looked to see if there's any updates. So let's see. Um, any update on the Sarah Boone case? Lawyer you know is covering Sarah Boone a lot. We're going to jump in as that gets ready to go to trial, if it ever gets ready to go to trial. Silence, this is a great question. What kind of coffee maker do you use? I have a very bougie coffee maker. Do not be shocked by this. It's a Jura, and I fucking love it. However, Anything that brews coffee well is going to do you well. I love my new milk frother, the independent one. What was it? Crap, I totally forgot what it was. I showed you guys on Instagram. But the, the I got a little milk frother that's separate and apart from my coffee machine, and it has made all the difference in the world. So though my coffee machine, though my coffee machine will also froth milk and steam milk, it is not the luxurious 
like cold foam that I can get out of the independent frother. So however you brew your coffee, the little independent frothers are fantastic. It was not super expensive. Got it at Target. There were like four different kinds. I picked the one that did cold foam and hot foam. So is it the Keurig frother? I think it is, Mike. So it was. it's absolutely great. I love it. Will you be taking on Leo's case of chewing the power cords? Judy, you got this. That is slander against my client, um, libel against my client. There is no evidence of actually chewing power cords. I'm just saying. Um, my my client will will not tolerate this. My client is a puppy. Um, my client is not competent to to be tried. And there's there's only doctored photos. So no one really knows if Leo was actually uh, chewing anything. So no, yes, my client will not stand for this. My client deserves nothing but belly rubs, no slander, and no surreptitious photos. I mean, client was in a uh, in a private home with an expectation of privacy, and the photo was blurry. I don't have the metadata. Chad is absolutely right. So we will not accept this libel um, against my client, Leo. <laughs> Chrisley's versus Judice's Chrisley's. Uh, want the better BOP for all. Judice has wanted out and to make money and be with family. We'll see what happens. It'll be very interesting to see how this continues to go. I definitely got the sense. Well, there's also a difference. The Chrisleys went to trial. Um, the Judices pled and took a deal early on and were like, get me in, get me out, let me done. So it's it's absolutely different. KDH asked, are you following the Karen Reed case? I am keeping an eye on the dates. I think with the Karen Reed case, we're going to jump into it um, when it goes to trial and watch it as a jury. I don't I don't know if we're going to jump into it ahead of time and go through all the discovery motions and stuff. What I really enjoyed about Depp v. Heard, other than the fact that it was the wildest cast of characters that you've ever seen, but what I enjoyed was going into it without a ton of information about the case. I had covered the judge's ruling in the UK and that was it. I didn't go to the internet and watch everything that was available, read everything that was available. We went in as jurors and I enjoyed going in as jurors. And so I think with the Karen Reed case, we'll go in as jurors. From what I have seen, there are enough questions in that case that I I kind of want to, to see what they prove. That's, that's, that's my feeling at the moment about the Karen Richard case. They just posted a thing on the news that the other day about the Corey Richards case Eric was not only found with fentanyl in his system, but also an antipsychotic medication prescribed to her was found. I have not seen that in court documents, so I'm not sure where that's coming from, but we'll look. Do you know when Daryl Brooks is back in court? It got pushed, and I don't have the date on the top of my brain. Um, Runkle's coverage of Janet is great. Agreed. Please tell us about your coffee maker. I think we did that. And I will put on social a picture of the frother that I'm talking about. It's from Target. I will put it in my Amazon shop. Look at me. I'll put it in the Amazon shop. I will find my frother. I'll put it in the Amazon shop. I will put a link on social and I will put a link in the description and I will put a link on the app so you guys can see it. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, STEM girly here who's passionate about prison reform from a public health stance. Any advice for uniting deep STEM with law for good? I think there's always room for it. Do I have anything off the top of my head? No, but there a scientific approach to some of the problems that are faced in law is never a bad thing. Um, but I would look for law firms in your area that are actively involved with prison reforms. There are, there are law firms and projects like the innocent project innocence project that focus on those things. And I would look for those, those areas first. So, uh, let's see. We, we, at some point we will, are you covering any more YouTube cases like the Illuminati craziness? The problem I'm having right now is that the cases that I have been covering are moving so much that I am so behind on documents to read to update you on those cases that diving into a new case takes a tremendous amount of onboarding information. Um, so it's really timing and trying to make sure that I do not lose my mind. So... Joe Jersey said, can Janet appear in front of texting judge just for the laughs? That would be amazing. We can pretend. <laughs> Question off topic, but if you uh, frame Becky's, Becky's book, can you have a bedazzled, the audacity sign on it? It needs an evidence sign first. It's an exhibity. Where did it go? It's somewhere in the office. It's an exhibity. Um, let's see. Um, Floor cry in... 
mm, in out no in out loud for cry in out loud i think i put the spaces in the right place have you seen the facts not fuckery cup she created for herself i saw that runkle posted that on twitter mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i did see that so if you guys don't follow runkle over on twitter or x or whatever the fuck it's it's over there yes janet seemed to have made an inspired by facts not fuckery cub question on the tracy sanderson extension response um did we see correctly that the extension is till january 18th 2024 eight days uh january 19th 2024 yeah it was not a super long extension i think that's appropriate so um let's see did you see the 12 charges the judge attacker got i I knew there were going to be additional charges. We're going to go through that on the members only live this month. Did I see exactly what those charges were? No, I haven't looked, but I knew there would be new charges. Um, let's see. Have you seen the case against Google maps where the dad drove off a bridge? No, I haven't. I have not. Can we get a Tati update soon? If there's anything to update, we'll get a quick bits update. They are supposed to be going to trial in February. Could it be a possible conflict of interest for Charlie Adelson's attorney to also represent Donna? I imagine Charlie Adelson has a different attorney on appeal, and these are not his appellate attorneys, but I don't, I mean, I think Donna would have to waive it, but I think it's a waivable conflict if there's any conflict. I don't think that Donna's argument at trial is going to be, well, my son murdered them. I think it's going to be none of us did this. Um, and so if her defense strategy is going to be, none of us did this, then no, there's not a conflict because it'll be consistent with what Charlie's defense was. So, um, I'd be interested in what the defense attorneys have to say about that though. Question. Why don't people who care about politics care about legal cases? People who care about politics absolutely care about legal cases. Um, I think so they don't always care about pop culture. So there are, there are traditional news doesn't always view pop culture with the same esteem and importance they see politics. It's a, uh, I don't know, it's a thing. NJ Kathy said, and keep in mind everyone, if you pay taxes, you're paying for expired food, overpriced commissary, medical, et cetera. Well, I mean, the, the, those in custody pay for the commissary, but yes. Question, could the naughty tax ban face charges of perjury if they lied on the stand? Um, I haven't seen that happen yet. So I don't know if anything is going to happen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hunter, I appreciate that. I've seen uh, that comment a lot in the Scientology cases. We're going through the court documents and I'm going to keep going through the court documents. If going through the court documents is something they're going to, anyone's going to take issue with, it's not going to be the first time people have taken issue with me going through the court documents and saying the court documents say this. Um, so it's not going to be, it's not going to be the last and it's not going to be the first. Please look into the Slipknot case. Okay. Question. Have you heard about the ongoing investigation into Dr. Ben Brown? No. Wild Florida situation involving a plastic surgeon who's alleged to have killed his wife. I have not even heard of it. Um, at all. It does already said one year VDB, almost a thousand subs for my studio YouTube. Congratulations, Desiree. Yay. A lot of you are all for the Slipknot case. I will I will go take a look. Um, did anyone see the Love is Blind lawsuit with Netflix? No. Uh, question, will you cover the former president's RICO case? Probably not. Um, what do you think about the Stanley Cup chaos? I love a good cup. I don't know if chaos is, wor is worth it. I have lived through the Cabbage Patch doll chaos. I have lived through Beanie Baby chaos. I am marked safe from Stanley Cup chaos. Um, but I also understand that, that there are times people are like, I want all the things. Um, question, can Wendy be charged? And if not, why Wolfheart, we're going to do that in a whole, that's a whole separate, whole separate thing. Um, it is a whole separate thing. So we're going to talk about the, we'll talk about the immunity that Wendy has been granted and what's going to happen. So that. Um, my daughter has a Keurig that makes lattes in her dorm. Her Starbucks bill was getting too big. And sometimes you need Starbucks and sometimes you just don't. Um, Nishe said almost a year. Did you get the coloring page? Yes, I have the coloring page. I have not co colored it yet, but I have it. So thank you. 
Um, I thought we talked about that on the last. Did we talk about it on the last members? Maybe in my head. Are you going to be covering the Delphi case? We will see, again, onboarding new cases takes a tremendous amount of time and effort when they have a lot of documents. So um, there's some legally interesting stuff happening there, but it also really bumps up against uh, my hard stop with kiddo victims. So we will we will see on that one how it's covered. I might do it the way I've been doing the eight passengers, Ruby Frankie stuff where it's covered in podcast, not live. And we're covering just the legal documents and not getting too much into the background. So we will, we will see about that. I just have not had time to get into it. Who is Leo? Leo, I am well behind on the chat. Leo is Rob Law and Lumber's dog and my pup client. So I, <laughs> I adore our lawyer for the bond nerds. I mean, we, we just kind of, we just kind of, um, um, switch back and forth because Rob has taken on Fred as a client. So I feel that I can, I can, uh, I can take on Leo as a client. Rob and Mrs. Manager, got a puppy Doberman, and I'm sure the puppy is on social. I do not have a puppy. Rob has a puppy. Um, any current news from Idaho? No. Most things are under uh, seal. And there is a hearing coming up. When is that next hearing? Let's see. I've got it in my calendar. Give me one second. I'll tell you. Um, calendar. It's, when is it? Next week? The week after? It's coming up. Um, no, not that week. Mm, where is it? There's a filing due in the TikTok case tomorrow. But there's a, there's a date, I believe this month, ah, the 26th coming up in Idaho. So I will be covering that live for the next hearing. And then the podcast episode that week will be a breakdown of those motions before we get into the hearing on the 26th. So the 24th podcast will get you all ready for the hearing on the 26th. That's the plan. Cause we haven't gotten into some of those DNA motions in a while. Uh, so that let's see. I'm getting, I'm trying to get to as many questions as I can. I got a little behind. Um, just said, Emily, I need to shout out a fellow Lonard who recognized my, I have questions hoodie and said, hi, while shopping in Cincinnati, Jess, I absolutely love this. This is the reason I made merch is because it's so much fun to run into our fellow law nerds out and about. And it's really fun when somebody's like, oh, I know I'm in on the thing. I know the thing. Yay. So I love it when you guys see each other in public and say hi and have a great interaction. It's so much fun. It feels like community in person, not just community in line. Kristen said, my little baby Lonard is four weeks old today. Congratulations, mama. Uh, keeping this H wife company for a year now. Love you. Thank you, Jenny. Happy to keep you company. Hi from West Tennessee, drinking my Dr. Pepper. That's the most Tennessee thing I've ever heard, the ADHD stitcher. The love, the love Tennessee has for Dr. Pepper is uh, is something I was unaware of until I started working like, the snack bar at football games and then having like my kiddos friends around. But Dr. Pepper is the first soda that disappears from anything different than, um, different than other sodas. It lots and lots of love for, uh, for Dr. Pepper up and around here. Kaylee said, would you ever do a video on tips for living with ADHD and being successful? I, I mean, I don't know if I'm the best person to give advice on this. I talk about it a lot in our members only spaces because it's so far out of the realm of the content I do, but I still want, there are, there are some prominent ADHD women that I would love to talk to for the podcast. Um, the, the chat has suggested a few times that we do either an I have questions podcast or an I have questions segment. So I would love to do some, I have questions interviews, um, on it. Patricia D, did you see Judge Judge's ruling on cameras in court? It's kind of wild. I wonder if it's legal, First Amendment and all. I think it's legal. Um, I actually am not mad at Judge Judge's ruling on cameras in the courtroom. And so to catch, to catch up the entire class, Judge Judge is handling the cameras and providing a stream to the court's YouTube channel instead of allowing media cameras in the courtroom. Media is allowed in the courtroom. They are not allowed to record. The court is in charge of the cameras. I think we're going to see a lot of courts go this way. I'm not mad about it. We'll see how it works. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Susan's donating to the Leo Defense Fund. I'm taking the case pro bono, but I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Cleopatra said, I'm very impressed with your calendar accuracy. 
this is one of the things I did over break was I stopped and went through my entire docket and all of the cases and got everything on the calendar. Uh, no Dr. Pepper slander there. No, Dr. P Dr. Pepper is beloved. It is, it is, it is the, the, the number one guy in the group. <laughs> it's not just Tennessee. It's big in Kentucky also. See, big in the group. Dr. Pepper around here is the number one guy in the group. Robin Ian fighting over Google Bridge. Hilarious. I, um, I will have to go look at that. Hera Hart said three years. Woohoo. I love it. I love it. It goes fabulously with alcohol. There you go. I live in Coke. What flavor country? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of lemon, lemon Coke and you know, Coke right down there in Georgia. So uh, I get it. I just don't get the Stanley cup thing. Uh, a sweetly dark art. I get it. I am a person who, who can very easily fall to FOMO of like, I want this limited edition thing. It's gotten better as I've gotten older, but I can understand. I cannot understand like running and pushing and shoving. I'm not putting my personal safety at risk for a cup. I found this one on a shelf and I'm real happy with it. It's like watercolory and divine. So this is my newest Stanley. Do I need more than this one? Probably not. Probably not. Um, Valkyrie Art said Pepsi here, I think. Pepsi has a place? I mean, normally, this is this is my response to Pepsi. Um, I know this is a divisive statement on the internet. Here's my hot take. I am the person that if I am at a restaurant ordering a soda, which is rare, I normally get club soda with like some lemon in it. I'm a very big fizzy water person. But if I'm going to have a soda and I am out and about, I will say like, can I have a Coke? And they will say, Pepsi, okay. And my immediate response to that is, no, never. <laughs> so if it is a Pepsi place, I will not have Pepsi. Have my family and I gone to like McDonald's to get Cokes and then gone to Taco Bell to get tacos? Yes. Yes, we have. Um, or we will do root beer. I'm not a huge Mountain Dew fan um, or something else. But <laughs> is Pepsi okay? No dare you i realize some people have that response the other way um but i will if if you are in the mood for a coke only a coke will do i'm definitely not a a pepsi person i really enjoy the dr pepper cream soda <clears throat> amber said you want a coke yeah what kind dr pepper that, that's the most midwest shit ever um i love it mcdonald's coke is the best i think mcdonald's has like a proprietary something something where their coke is better than everybody else's coke um it is it is fizzier it is better it is just better it is just better it is just better it is, it hits different literally <laughs> emily that's a very california thing to do we love taco bell around here um for sure not a hepburn said it might also have been the internet as a whole yesterday adp sent me 11 notifications about my dad w2 it might have been an Amazon Web Services thing because when the internet acts weird, it's generally a Amazon Web Services quirk. But we'll find out today at some point. Double lumbar fusion here. I feel your pain. I, I'm sorry. Um, I hope nobody feels my pain. Back pain is the worst. Um, congratulations, Caitlin, on being a member for 23 months. So if Staples can like not put the one that I came to the store for as far from the front of the entrance as possible. That'd be great because somehow I spent $68 instead of seven. I mean, me every time I go everywhere, which is why I like shopping online so much is because I generally don't get as distracted. Um, that said, I went to buy like one new pen and ended up with like six new pens, but it happens. Um, Fanny Wiggle said it's like Firefest didn't end. They're doing a new one. That's something I want to talk about as well. They're doing a new one. Deborah said, shout out to my mom, Evelyn. We both love you, Emily. Thank you, Evelyn and Deborah. Oh, the nine month cruise, like Firefest. Yes, yes. They ran out of red wine and no port has any. How did the how are the ports out of port? As an ex-Navy sailor, you can't pay me enough. <laughs> Cindy, I get it. Cindy's like hard fucking pass on a nine month cruise. Um I Look, there's cruise people and there's not cruise people. I don't know if I could do a nine month cruise. I have done one back to back cruise and I loved it. But by the time we were done with the back to back cruise, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good now. That was good. I'm good now. But I can also see the appeal of going to, you know, every continent that you can go to and being like, I'm here for nine months. But I don't know what I would do with like my life. But I saw the, 
the legal disaster that I'm going to be following is the three-year cruise. Emily, are we just going to be talking about cruises? Yes. Um, there was a three-year cruise and people like sold their homes, subletted their apartments, put all their possessions in storage because three year cruise and people had already traveled internationally to go get on the three-year cruise and then they're like we don't have a ship it's a three-year cruise around the world and like as people are getting ready to like board the ship within a very short time to departure you're like oh um we don't have a ship the lawsuits the lawsuits the lawsuits the lawsuits but i get it that people are like sold their homes or or gave up their rent and then paid all the money for the cruise and the cruise is like we don't know when we're gonna we don't know when we're gonna be able to pay you back like what do you do you're then stuck somewhere with none of your shit and nowhere to live because you thought you were going to be on a cruise ship for three years i don't even know i don't even know i don't even know so I think there's going to be all of the lawsuits and we'll talk about it when all of the lawsuits happen. I try to not talk to th about things until they get into court, except like in a passing way, because once we have court documents, we have process and there will be allegations and then an answer. And then we know that there will be some resolution versus just, Oh, this thing happened. And then there's no resolution. And then I'm like, whatever happened with that thing? Why do I feel so like texting judge and Becca boo would be besties. Can you imagine a court run with, texting judge and becca boo oh, God. love the content thank you quirky carlota carlotta carlota carlotta i hope i said that right one of those ways mama bet said i love your valley girl voice oh my god mama bets i'm so practiced like with the voice changer and without like i grew up in los angeles so like hey um but yeah sometimes i'm inspired <laughs> Sarah said, Puffy is sus. He made so much money off Biggie. The album before he died was um, to be the last one on Puffy's label. Look, I read Keefe D's book. There, there's a lot. But like gag me with an entire place setting. Eh. Yes, Daniel. Not just gag me with a spoon. All. Bridget said, um, the Real Housewives Salt Lake City monocle necklace is from Meredith Mark's jewelry line. It's $30,000. I'm not surprised it's from Meredith's jewelry line. I am surprised that it's $30,000. I kind of loved seeing the different Meredith Mark's jewelry in, um, in Jen Shaw's forfeiture. There were like pieces of Meredith Mark's jewelry in Jen's forfeiture. I don't know if I need a $30,000 monocle necklace. I loved it. I loved the monocle necklace though. Like it was kind of iconic. And I'm at the age where I like, I need my readers too. Like these are my reading glasses. And so I absolutely get needing your readers. But when Meredith is like, I have receipts, proof, timeline. Anyway, screenshots. When Meredith pulls out the, let's look at what I actually said. And then pulls out the monocle necklace and is like reading, reading it on set. It was iconic. I died. I absolutely loved it so much. I loved it so much. I just, I just loved it. Um, Anthony's like, they have one on Amazon, probably not a $30,000 one, I would imagine, but I thought it was great. Uh, Carla said, I'm an ultimate world cruise follower as well. So much happening. And yes, it's a great idea uh, for a reality show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it like, it needs to be made a reality show midway through because people didn't go on to the cruise to be cast on a reality show which makes it kind of better like you don't have people that want to be on a reality show on the cruise which is why we're seeing tension between the like elite cruisers who are just like why is this a tiktok sen sensation i'm a what is it called pinnacle member like i have status i and people are just running around filming like they don't want to be a part of it which creates like actual real tension, which makes it um, fascinating. So Robin, it, Robin, the ADR pro said reason for Esquire is classless barristers were considered gentry and denoted as Esquire while solicitors were considered trade and not American lawyers adopted the Esquire to show that they were special. Lawyers do like to think that they are special. I mean, it's, it's three letters after hundreds of thousands of dollars of education. I get it, but I'm not surprised like everything that it has has derivations in that um though i do think well 
Well, it depends on the lawyer in the U.S. Some lawyers are more like barristers. Some lawyers are more like solicitors. It depends on the job. There's some lawyers that never set foot in a courtroom that are practicing lawyers. So it just depends. Some have never done trials. It really just depends on on what you practice. Um, is there is there differentiation between lawyers who do different things in their minds? Yes. Does it really matter? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like the trial lawyer is like I'm a trial lawyer. That's what you get. <laughs> The lawyers who do more documentary stuff are like, yeah, but you have typos. And it's like, eh, we, have all, we all have different skill sets. Emily brings all the best law tea. That's what I'm here for, Candy Mom. That's what I'm here for. What does the tax agent gain by lying under oath? I don't know. The Chrisleys getting convicted and them proving that they're not wrong. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I don't like it. Um, and if they do get a retrial, then that will have to be remedied, right? Hope you can stay warm early next week. It's supposed to snow in Arkansas Sunday, Monday. Maybe you can read while it's too cold to be outside. I'm going to definitely do that. I am um, I'm ready for like a snow for the year and then to be done. Have you seen the Scientology protest on TikTok? No, I have not. I, I have not. Um, let's see. Leo is now accused of sleeping on the job. Oh. Oh, no. No, no. Le no. No, no, no. My client is a child. And what we're not going to do is engage in literal puppy labor. No, 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 no. There is no job. The job is to receive belly rubs and be adorable. And that job is already fulfilled. There is no other job. Sleeping is part of being adorable. Um, Dr. Barbara Clark, question, is your docket now more busy than your docket when you were a DA? It's different. It's, it's different. There's a lot more reading. <laughs> we all lived through toilet paper chaos. Um, we're going to be talking about that with a future sponsor. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> Mama Bet said Leo Defense Fund. Perfect. M's Daughter's podcast is a little shady podcast. That's funny. Um, reasonably shady versus the real slim shady is something I'm very interested in. Stephen A said, Mountain Dew fan, my neurodivergence requires a specific, consistent flavor. And when Culver's switched to Coke, I rioted in my car by throwing old mail around. Stephen, I completely understand that because when you are a soda drinker, there are certain foods where it is like this food only tastes the right way with soda. And I completely understand you. Um, right now, I am eating the exact same lunch I ate mostly during the Depp Be Heard trial. Um, we have we have circled back to the Trader Joe's gluten-free chicken nuggets and the Trader Joe's corn chips, but I ran out of the dip that I like with them. And I'm like, I don't like, I don't know if I can eat this without like the whole meal needs to be complete. <laughs> I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, I will probably be going to the store today because the store that I went to over the weekend was out. And I am, I am so annoyed. Um, can we, can we discuss why Coca-Cola does not taste the same as it did decades ago? I don't know why, but I don't think it does. Um, I don't know. Uh, Emily, are you gluten-free too? I am not always gluten-free, but those are my favorite nuggets and they happen to be gluten-free. Um, I, I limit, I do gluten limited, but I am not completely gluten-free. Um, there was a box of non-gluten-free cookies in my office that are my favorite. So no, not entirely. Happy new year, everyone. Here's to another full year of you know what with EDB fuckery to fuckery. Uh, let's see. Florida passed a law that a YouTuber is responsible if their fans do anything. If a YouTuber rants about a public figure. Okay. That's interesting, Terry. I, uh, that's interesting. I, I think there are people who weaponize their office, their office, their audience in a way that I really dislike and disagree with. I hate it when creators do that. But I also think creators have a first amendment right to be like, this testimony was fuckery. That does not mean send hate, send emails, send letters. It means have a conversation about things being fuckery. Um, what about when the news starts covering a case and then like, all of the public shows up outside, I don't know, the laundry's home because the news is reporting from outside their home and harassing the laundry family. Do I think there were things that the laundry family did that I'm like, mm? what are you doing over there? Yes. Do I think people should stand outside their homes screaming things at them? No. 
Um, do I think that the news media is responsible for that? Well, they're broadcasting outside their home, so everybody knows where it is. Uh, it's a slippery slope when you're like, speech made people do things. People choose to do things. So um, I think there's, I also think there's a difference between directed action when people ask for things. That is a slippery slope. I'm very, very interested to see. Uh, FNF had a hysterical episode about the Google Maps. We're going to have to take a look at the Google Maps. Um, you guys, my back is killing me. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get rolling. But um, as if Florida isn't already a fuck around and find out state, I, I need to look at the law. I have questions. Pam S said, cheer wine for the win. It's very specific. It's very specific. So with all of that, um, it, 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 we would need to look at the, I would need to look at the law. Um, we are going to have to, as a, as a society, figure out how we're going to deal with things. And we, I was just talking in text group about this. We're going to have to figure out how to deal with things like deep fakes and AI and, and the rest of it. Um, we're going to have to find better ways to deal with internet harassment and to deal with cyber stalking and all the rest of it and doxing. There, there are things that need to be dealt with. Um, but we also, I agree with this, Carrie B. Absolutely. This is where I was going. Wait, where'd it go? Um, we absolutely need to learn how to have conversations that don't devolve into screaming, name calling, othering trying to put people in a box. We need to be able to talk to each other again and be able to talk to each other in a way where somebody's not like, wait, hold on, what did you say? I'm gonna put it on Twitter and see if you can be canceled. We need to be able to communicate and we need to be able to understand where we disagree on things. Respectfully, it's, I just, uh, I don't know. High Low said, wait, where did it go? Um, I saw the comment about birch beer. Yum. Hi, Losa. Brian posted a bit of himself laughing as he followed the laundries by car, made them turn around and go home. I don't, and I don't like that either. I have not seen that. Um, there, there are, there are boundaries to things, right? Um, and I think it's okay that there are boundaries to things, but I also worry about trying to be like, well, if a creator talks about anything and somebody in an audience does something, then that's a problem. And that's not just because I'm a creator, because where else does that go? We have to be able to have public discussion about things. Um, that's different than calling for action. And I've definitely seen creators do that. I fucking hate that. But if you tell your audience, hey, don't do, don't do any of this, and your audience still does it, I don't know what a creator can really do about that. How do you control the actions? of other people. I don't know. Um, feel better soon. Maybe get a massage. It will, it will pass. Um, it will pass. So just Jen, I see it. I was officially licensed as a therapist in Vegas yesterday. Jen, I wanted to give congratulations. Congratulations. Also know any good lawyers for my cat who is being charged with bird slaughter. Okay. Look, um, I, I, I think that was probably self-defense, Jen. It, it sounds like it might have been. You know how those birds do. <laughs> I mean, you know, is eating a hamburger a cow slaughter? No. I mean, so is 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 bird slaughter really bird slaughter or is it just dinner? I I don't know. It also might have been a gift to you, Jen. So I mean, I'll take the I'll take the case. I take the case. But also, congratulations, and I hope the chat gives congratulations. Um, how to ADHD is the channel. My mistake. Oh, punk law nerd. I really like the how to ADHD channel. Um, it's really good. Love that only Fred needs a lawyer, not George. Uh, George is sneaky. <laughs> George doesn't get caught. What kind of bird is the important question? It feels like self-defense. Congratulations, Jen. I did see it. I wanted to get to it at the end. Um, I love that the chat is like, congratulations. Uh, your bird has, your bird has counsel here. Oh, your cat has counsel here. Uh, it seems like a case of self-defense, obviously. So, um, thank you everyone. I'm trying honored to be able to help people out there. And I think that's what a lot of the law nerds want to do. A lot of the law nerds are like, we're here, we're here. And Jen, I appreciate you. It's good to see you. Chat, I am going to go. I'm going to go. It is time. My back is killing me. 
It's good to see you all. We've got a busy week next week. I will be around social tangentially. I need to watch some Real Housewives and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Lawnards, I adore you. Happy New Year. Oh, 2024 is going to be busy, y'all. Uh, don't forget to download the Lawnard app. It should notify you once when I am live. And it's where we're going to put those connect the dots back up and link to the video so you can see all the mischief managed um, of, of it all. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media and don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a Lawnerd.